Unity 97.3. 0870-90-90-973. Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. And the giant flaming fruit playing his fat fingers over the keys signals the start of another super show. I am not Ian Lee. Oh, no. Where has he gone now? Uh, he's doing, uh, a Big Brother thingy. What? Uh, one of those Big Brother programmes. Is Big Brother still on the air? Uh, there seems, seems to be something wrong with my mic. Is there? As usual, yeah. Seems to be pe peaking and, um, it's, uh, top end is all distorted. It all saw itself Oh, it will it? It always uh, does. Okay. <laughs> Never mind, eh? It's good. It's still going, then, is it? Oh, oh, pal, I hope so, because he, I think he, that's where he's gone, so... Every now and again, you do, uh, it doesn't it seem distorted to you? Like I'm talk- like it's just peaking way loud. You're looking at me like I'm a total dope. Well, it does in my ears. How come it does in my ears and not in yours? We've got different headphones, too. Oh, right. Um... It does seem like every time I sit down here, there's got... Th <laughs> oh, never mind. Just carry on, pretend it's not happening, be a professional. Yeah. Yeah, you always find something to poke holes about. Every now and again, you do read the papers and you think, oh, blimey, they're still in there. I'd completely forgotten. That mess is still going on. What, in the house? Yeah. They're going to be very upset when they come out and they realise that no one is remotely interested, and by which I mean at all. Yeah, because they all say that they're not in there for the fame and the fortune. Yeah, I would have believed that with the first people that went in because they had no idea what was going on, what for uh, the the potential of what it was that they were doing. Mm. You know, the very uh, you can remember. E it was grand when we were a lad. When the first people went in, they were doing it for the good of the nation. You remember that, don't you? No, <laughs> I didn't. Didn't bother watching it then. Because this was before uh, the culture of celebrity, mm. when people were uh, actually uh, keen to take part in a social experiment. Yeah. No. No. Not really, no. No. But it was less of a freak show. Now, I speak as somebody who didn't watch uh, the first one. I only watched last year's because some dope called me up and said, you must watch this rubbish because everybody will be calling you up about it. And I, um, I was delusional at the time and I thought, oh yeah, right enough. And so I did. And they didn't. Not one single call the entire year. And I spent, I wasted the whole summer watching. If only I'd known that that was the last summer that we will actually experience in this country. Don't you ever look at the news and you think, you know what, that might be the end. It might be the beginning of the end of this country being habitable. Who's to say it won't be? I mean, this might be the start of the deluge. From now on, most of the country will be underwater. Suppose it is. Suppose well, we actually have to pick up sticks and leave. Well, you're the bearer of good news, aren't you? Well, it might be true. You know, if this might be uh, the start of the uh, change in the weather that uh, those experts have been predicting all along. You know, those same experts at the beginning of the year who said it was going to be the longest, hottest, driest summer on record. Th yeah. Those people, yeah. So do you reckon everybody, if it did stay like this now forever, yeah. people would actually get up and move abroad? Well, th there'd be such... I mean, we, we shouldn't have a, a problem with the availability of land now. Mm. If you wipe out all of the land that's underwater at the moment, which includes Surrey and Berkshire and Oxfordshire and, you know, all points north, I don't really pay much attention. It just gets so boring after a while, doesn't it? I mean, you're all having a very bad time, I know, but it's... Boring! ...to just keep hearing the same story over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. But oh, if I see one more news person in waders, I'm going to throw my TV out the window. Just because it's affecting a lot of people. Yeah, I know, but so's war affecting a lot of people. There's mm. a lot of people who don't have any water uh, at all, never mind about to wade through, to drink. But then again, the people who are actually experiencing oh, floods Here at the moment... Go, the voice of reason, yes. You know, if, if they're in, you know, areas where they're getting extreme floods, you know, surely they're not going to be watching the TV about all the all well, they won't be able to plug, they won't be able to plug it in, will they? Um, because their sockets will be underwater. Very and dangerous. And finding out all this information. Yeah. That if your they socket need. is underwater, don't plug anything in it. Warning! Warning! Latest uh, uh, information from the government of health and the you know Department of Health and Safety. Yeah. Put a cone around it. 
Yes. <laughs> they like to state the obvious, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah. I'll take this one. Fish guy. Hello, Chris. Yes, fish. What? Fish. Fish. Gary Fishman rules. That was great. Great start. I know. Wasn't it better when we weren't taking calls? Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It just gets so dull. I mean, it's just the same story over and over. We've had a little light rain. We can't cope, as usual. If, if there's anything other than 60 degrees and dry, this country falls flat on its face, isn't it? It's like we're teetering on the edge of disaster all the time. A little light snow, all the trains come to a halt. Too much sun, all the roads buckle. Mm. Um, t uh, too much snow, well, just the, the merest hint of snow. It doesn't it even have to be a lot of it. We're looking at ten inches. Just a half an inch of snow will, uh, will uh, d drag us all to a halt. A little light rain and look what happens. Don't you, uh, it's kind of worrying, really, that uh, a country that's as developed and is worth as much as us it's got absolutely no margin for error at all. Mm -hmm. Don't you find that a bit concerning? Mm, well, yes. Well, no, not really. Say yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, Nick. <laughs> yeah. You're easily led. Yeah. Don't listen oh. to me. If you don't think that I'm uh, talking the truth, then stand up for yourself, boy. All right. I think we're so... Oh, shut up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think we're so used to us petering on the edge all the time that, you know, we've just become <laughs> accustomed to it. Yeah. You know, we're expecting things to fall apart if we touch them and if we step on a train we know it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take half an hour longer than it's supposed to. Yeah. If you go and see your doctor, he'll explode before your very eyes. I called my doctor up uh, the other week. He said he can't talk to me now. He's trying to park his car in Glasgow Airport. I thought he meant at. Ah. Here is, um, Bracknell. Hello, Geoffrey. Yeah, I, I, I think... Oh, it's Jethro Dull. Yeah, hi. Um, the, um, doom and gloom scenario, I think, I think you've got to remember back to your O-level biology. Yeah. Um, or even pre, pre-O-level biology, when you're taught by Mrs. Goodison or Mrs. I don't know, Mrs. Brown or... Yeah, whatever. talk about interesting. Boring! Mm -hmm. No, don't be horrible. Don't be horrible. Mrs. Bran, I don't like Bran. All right, well, the, well who's your, what was the name of your biology teacher? They're usually female. No, I don't know. I gave up sciences uh, quite early, realising that uh, that numbers and uh, remembering things w wasn't my thing. All right, but do, do, do you remember <laughs> a little bit of, they must have given you a little bit of Darwinian evolutionary theory. No, uh, the only thing I remember about science was that carbon dioxide turns lime water milky. That's very interesting, isn't it? Have you been able to use that in the rest of your life? Never. Oh, no, it's a bit like cosines, sines, tangents, and yeah. differential equations. Oh, memories, what memories? Yeah. I've got no well, idea what relevant. any of them mean. But the, the thing is, is, a lot of people think Darwinian theory is the s survival of the fittest. Yeah. Or for survival of the strongest. But it's not. It's the survival of those most capable of adapting to changes of their, in their environment, okay? Yeah, survival of the fittest. No, the, yeah, those most fit to, to, to adapt to the changes of the environment. Yeah, survival of the fittest. Not the strongest, not no, the toughest. I'm, no, I'm not saying f fittest as in strongest or oh, toughest. Right. Oh, th those most suitable then, those sit fittest as in suitable, that's what you mean, yeah? Yeah. Okay, well, I've, I've got agreement there. Oh, well, well that's great, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so all you've got, you got to do is develop your amphibian tendencies in your, in, in, in your DNA and you'll be okay. Ah, uh, yeah, good point. Give me a thousand years and I might uh, yeah. come up with something. Well, what's that name, that guy, um, that, um, the other, David... Patrick Stewart. Ike. David Ike said we're Fish all really man. reptiles, you know, we're all... So, so all we've got to do is get, rather than being... Homo erectus, we need to get back to being semi-aquatic am amphibians and we'll survive the next few years if it's going to be rain. It's not Patrick Stewart, is it? It's Patrick Duffy, the uh, the guy who used to be in Dallas, who was also Fishman, Aquaman, Aquaman. Oh, right. Yeah, where's Aquaman when you need him? I don't know, but where's Superman when you need him? Yeah, good point. Is he, I think he's, he's injured in a, in, a, in a wheelchair, isn't he? After a riding accident. Uh, I think he's dead. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, he's moved on then. I think he's still dead, yeah. He's moved on. Mm. Well, it's probably the best place for him to be. Well, that's not a very nice thing to say. Well, no, my name is not, wherever he might be now, if there's a laughter life, he's not worried about about the climatic con conditions changeable in, in the UK. Cause oh, yeah, because it'll be uh, lovely in Nirvana, yeah. Yeah, or in um, Utopia or whatever it is. Right. Twinned with Nirvana. Kirk Cobain. <sighs> so, oh, anyway, no, Jeffrey, what did you call about? What did I call about? Yeah. I'm trying to reassure you, because you seem to be going through periods of neurotic anxiety about the weather conditions, and I was saying, chill out. Chill it out. just occurs to me, you know what, it, it just occurs, because it looks like, um, 
the beginning of a Hollywood disaster movie, doesn't it? Uh, you know, uh, at the beginning of Asteroids or what, you know, one of those asteroid films, little, little rocks the size of a golf ball will come down and blow holes in buildings and so on because they'd be coming down so fast. But that wasn't the, 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 the be-all and end-all of the danger because another rock the size of uh, Wembley Stadium was heading right for us and was going to render us asunder. So this could be the beginning of the end of uh, this country being habitable. Yeah, well, I remember, I remember doing my history at Neen College in about 1976, and they were predicting the end of the world in the year 1000. And I remember Peter Knowles, who used to play wing for, for Wolverhampton Wanderers in the 1970s, leaving Wolverhampton Wanderers because the Jehovah Witnesses had predicted the end of the world in about 1977. They got it wrong that time. Yeah, it? by about 40 years. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know whether doom and gloom merchants are just bought... Well, not no, just... Um, what's the word? totally pessimistic because they indulge themselves i mean most of the time we survive haven't we up till this point yes but then that's what the dinosaurs said how do you know They're they weren't now, how they? do you know they weren't speaking anyway listen mate um move on. it's uh, been uh, educational as always and i've got to go tata uh, here's to travel now with alan joyce London's LBC 97.3 Nick Abbott I'm listening, dear. You can talk to me. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Uh, I just wanted to say, what's happened to this boiling hot summer that I was bracing myself for? Yeah, I know. You and me oh, both. Oh, we've got all this rain. All this rain. Yes. I thought the global warming was supposed to be hot. If this is global warming, I'm not completely <laughs> satisfied. I'm absolutely, I'm sort of, um, I don't know what to think of it. Because they know. told us we're going to have really blazing hot summers. Correct. And I don't like the heat. <laughs> So I was expecting over 100 degree heat and things. <laughs> well, it, the, people are having 100 degree heat, but 100 Not miles us. south no. of us, yeah. Yeah, so what's happened, do you know? Do yes, you know, I do. You know? As a matter of fact, I do. I'm glad you asked. The Azores <laughs> High, which is, uh, ordin no, the, uh, the jet stream, which ordinarily sits south of us. Right. No, north of us, <laughs> has come south. So right. that all the weather that we would ordinarily be having, they're having in France. 100 degree heat, people uh, collapsing and dying from the heat, it's so hot down there. Yes, and all I the know, weather that I... Scandinavia normally has, which kind yes. of is, uh, makes you want to cancel all your uh, future engagements to go to Scandinavia, this is what Scandinavia ordinarily has for their summer weather. And we're getting their weather, and, oh. um, and uh, France is getting ours. I see. I see what you mean. It's all moved. Yeah, that's right. It's moved a bit. Because I, I read in Romania about 50 people died in the heat over there. I know. In Romania. We should only be so lucky. I mean, this 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 is like New, Orle New Orleans, isn't it, in America, when we saw all that. <laughs> yeah, we're, there. yeah, apart from the people not shooting each other, yeah, it's exactly mm -hmm. like New Orleans, I yeah. I mean, I hope you're not going to have this every year. Well, see, what that's that's what I'm thinking. Who's to say that we won't? Who's to say that from now on this is what it's going to be like? And you know uh, whose fault that is? No. Uh, I expect it's your fault, Charlotte. Have you got a patio oh, my heater? <laughs> my fault. Have you got a patio heater? No. Have you got no. um, central heating? Yes. Well, I rest my case. All oh, right. Okay. Actually, the flooding has come down to about a mile of us. Really? Yeah, but you won't. It's just a river that's overflowed. Right. right. Well, how do you um, know that it won't touch you? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be that far. Right. Um, because uh, um, they said, do you think even London might flood? Well, sure. somebody was asked this, somebody from the government was asked this on the news, and they uh, quite calmly and confidently said that London, there is absolutely no way that London will flood. Our defences are solid, she said. She said. <laughs> That's what she said, yeah. 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 If it did, how far would it go into London, do you think? How far down? <laughs> uh, if it did, the Thames. Oh, but it won't, though, Charlotte. Haven't you uh, listened to what I've just been saying? No, but it might. It might, <laughs> you never know. The so government's decree is that it won't. <laughs> but they get, can get it wrong. What, the government? Yeah, they oh, get loads of things come wrong. off it. When have they ever got anything wrong? Um... Yeah. I'll leave Thank you with you. that. Thanks okay. a lot, Charlotte. Best okay. of luck. Bye. Sandbags by the door, all right. But, uh, yeah, well, who's to say that this isn't going to be our weather from now on? This is it. This is going to be uh, summer, and winter will be... You know, like that um, that disaster film, uh, which was a disaster, well, the, uh, the Day, the after, day tomorrow. after Tomorrow. God, what a pile of...
cack that was. Well, a load of hot rubbish. But, you know, the, uh, the weather changed uh, almost overnight, and that's exactly what will happen, because you were read earlier on this week that uh, we used to be joined to France. Yeah. And they previously thought that the, that the English Channel was uh, eroded over uh, millennia. But apparently it happened in 24 hours. Stone Age man was sitting on a rock enjoying a Neolithic cocktail, and then this wave of water and rocks the size of buildings just b blew over the horizon and created the English Channel in in less than a day. Within tw really? Yeah, apparently so, oh, yeah. That's a load of rubbish, isn't it? How come? Well, 24 <laughs> hours is a bit quick for, you know, a big massive landmass to yeah. form like that. That's right. Did they give eviction notices? No, apparently not. Yeah. No. Well, they did. They pinned a notice to um, a rock in uh, in the north of England, and they mm -hmm. said, "Well, you know, it's it's in your locality. We did give you notice. If you uh, didn't to take it upon yourself to come and read the notices, then it's out of our hands." Problem mm. is, they hadn't learned to read yet. I guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and they didn't can, di didn't invent anything that can pin paper to rock either. Yeah. Well, I just don't get why every other country is having heat waves. I know that can be bad as well. No, it can't. But. Why is it only us that are getting yeah, this? I know. What because have we done we're wrong? Stuck out in the middle of the Atlantic. What have we done wrong? Yeah. Well, you know who I'm blaming it on. Who? Think back when the start of the rain happened. What major cultural shift occurred in this country? What uh, political event occurred at the beginning of the rain? Since which it has not stopped raining. Uh, yeah. Oh, when um, what's his name took over. <laughs> Exactly. David Since Prowse. that man took over, it's been rain, rain, rain. It's got to be his fault. There has to be a connection in some way. Yeah. You'd think he'd take the day off just to see if it is. <laughs> South Norwood. Hello, Philip. I'm glad Nick. Philip. Um, there was a man from Atlantis, not Aquaman. Correct. Always yeah. right with the facts, okay. yes. Um, the reason I rang Nick, I don't know whether you saw it today. Did you, did you ever see the copy of today's Daily Mail? Um, I skimmed through it. The story about they reckon that uh, there's one, you've got to get this right, one in 30 of us have got relatives that were convicts, sent as convicts to Australia. How did they get back? Well, they, they didn't know, I mean, they had, uh, when they went, it says here that the, uh, what was it, uh, 763,000 went, and it said they must have had about 800,000 brothers and sisters that stayed here. Oh, right. So we weren't convicts, we're just well, rather, we're relatives. We're descended, well, that we've got relatives in our past yeah. who were convicts who were sent to uh, Australia. And the reason this article that was in there was that there's a new website just started, so you'll be able to trace whether any of your relatives were put on a ship to Botany Bay or Port Arthur. But why would that be interesting? I mean, oh, is it, is it, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> no, them? I don't care. I mean, I, oh, I come never, on! Oh, please! I never met them. I have no connection with them at all. No, but I mean, you know, you it, 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 you must be interested to suddenly no. gather that you're. Uh, who should we say? Oh no, no better not. In case. Great, 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 great grandfather. Yeah. Who doesn't even share your name? Well, yeah. was on a, a, a boat to Australia once. How's I mean, that interesting? I mean, I, I, to the best of my knowledge, I haven't got anybody, but. I've actually been to one of these prisons on Tasmania. Oh, yeah. The famous one called Port Arthur. Tassie? Yeah, Tassie. Did you take a map of Tassie with you? Oh, then, no, no, no it, well, it's, it's very similar to, it, it's, a, it's a lovely place. Oh. We used to call it, I believe, Van Diemen's Land when it was first discovered. And uh, this Port Arthur has been uh, turned into a living museum. And you can walk through the prison... Um, of course, the, the, it's still a, a, as a ruin, but what they've recreated inside the prison to show you what it was like to the people that were sent there from 1830 to 1877. Yeah, fun for all the family. Well, yeah, and then, um, unfortunately, a few years ago, as you probably remember, they had a, a terrible tragedy there. No. Where this guy went... Well, you're going to bring us down now, aren't you? Pardon? You're going to depress us now, aren't no, you? No, just, I'm just bringing you a little bit of history of the place. OK. And uh, there's an island there... This is going to be depression. There's an island which you can go to when you visit there called the Island of the Dead. Oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah. Um, I'll take a picnic. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, because the story, as you saw the picture in the paper today, they've got a picture of Mick Jagger. Right. Because of the relevance of the fact that he played Ned Kelly. Yeah. And Ned Kelly's father was, was, uh, was sent there and uh, for stealing, it says here, two pigs in Tipperary. 
So he was sent there, and of course then Ned Kelly came along and... Uh, the rest was history. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like I said at the beginning. Boring! Oh, yeah, Nothing no, more not. boring than history. Yeah, Nick, can I just say one final thing? Yes. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to call in on Saturday. I didn't know you were going to be on. So if you want to hear this week's list, you'll have to listen to Clyde Ball's podcast. I absolutely will do that. I'm sure you will. Thanks a lot, Phil. And all the best. Ta-ta, mate. <laughs> so what have we learnt so far? We're all doomed. Oh, yeah, that's right. In the, in the correct accent... We're doomed! London's LBC 97.3 Hello? 0870-9090-973 Nick Abbott Well, let's get back to it. Charlton, hello Neil. Hello Nick. Neil. Well, I don't know what the fuss is about, I really don't. How do you mean? Well, going back to the adaption <coughs> theory that um, um, Mr Boring said, Human beings are adapt to everything. Look at Venice. Yeah. Like, we, we could... London could be Venice. Think of the opportunities. Uh, well, the, the difference is that Venice was built like that, and <laughs> London was well, built we, for we, horses. We, well, all we need to do is fill in the basement, is fill in the ground floors, build in front doors on the first floors, trading our cars in for boats, uh, moving the diet away from cows and chickens to fish. And then I mean, change all our shops to shops that sell masks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't know what the... It, it, it could be... Uh, the tourism. Think of the tourism as well. Well, I, I, I've I spent about a week in Venice, and I've never... S I, I've probably... Half of the photographs being taken on this planet at any one time are being taken in Venice. I've never seen <laughs> anything like it. Mind you, when you get there, all you want to do is take photographs. It's the it's like walking into a canaletto. It's uh, it's like stepping it's back really, in time hundreds really of years. All the streets, a lot percentage of the streets of Venice are waterways. All of them. All of them. Are there no cars in Venice at all. Um, well, there's uh, no. <laughs> well, up until the point where um, where your bus stops and then you get on the waterway, no. I mean, there's a lot. There's a bridge that you can drive over. And you can park your car there, but you can't proceed any further. I want it to rain. Why? Well, I, I, want, I want to be living in London as Venice. Right. Maybe you should just go and live in Venice, cut out the middleman. I don't speak Italian, though. Oh, well. But, Neither does anybody else in Venice. <laughs> it's, it, it, it really upsets the Venetians. Uh, it's all perception. I saw the news the other day, and there was a woman on there screaming and, and crying, and it was understandable. But, you know, our world has fallen apart. And, and then they went and interviewed a neighbour, and the neighbour said, well, it's only a bit of water, isn't it? So, you know, it's just... I, I, you can't learn too much about this, because it's natural, and you can't blame anybody for it, can you? Like yeah. Darth Vader or anything. Yeah, I'm going to blame Darth Vader, yeah. But, what, but why? Why is it Gordon Brown's fault? It's not Gordon Brown's fault, is it? Well, uh, it, it's not a coincidence that it has rained continuously since he took over. It can't be. It's God well, punishing so all us. People, all people mean... For giving up St. Tony. Or do, when they're looking for someone to blame. Yeah. It's not really... You can't really blame them for uh, well, rain. I'm, I'm just lashing out wildly. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got a good point. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Neil. Bye-bye. Cheers. Ta-ta. Uh, yes, I think that we should be making, um arrangements to run to the hills. Hey, running to the hills, isn't, um... Is it's a film? In, no, it's a, a song by, oh, uh, uh, Kate, Iron Kate Bush. Well, yeah. Iron Maiden. Running up that hill is Oh, running Kate up Bush. that hill is Kate Bush, <coughs> is the right answer. Doesn't Kate Bush live on an Eat? What's that? It's one of those little islands in the middle of the Thames, where uh, people have uh, houses on stilts. Or the smart ones have them on stilts, the, uh, the, the, the ones who didn't see ones it. The ones who didn't away. see it. The ones who didn't see it coming, um, you know, have, uh, live in basements. Whereabouts are they? In the middle of the Thames. Right. Nah, I've never seen them. Yeah, here and there. The Thames are splits, and it looks like it's going in two different directions, but it's actually just an eot. I think it's, I think they're called eots. Doesn't Kate Bush live on an eot? I have no idea. Yeah. She'll be in the trees! <laughs> I, I can't even <laughs> imagine what well, they look like. They look like little islands in the middle of the Thames. On stilts? Yeah. Uh, Croydon. Hello, John. I think you're thinking of Eel Pie Island, for example. No, I think they're called Eot. Aren't they called Eots? Um, Some, yes, something but, like that. Yes, but Eel Pie Island is an example of... Oh, I um, see. Of, right. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's their own stupid fault for stupidly, clumsily living in a, 
a house which is on a very low down level instead of at the top of a hill like normal people. Yeah, stupid. Um, anyway, <laughs> I, I was thinking, uh, most of your um, viewers are no doubt wanting to know wherein lies the strength of the overthrown bourgeoisie. Well, most of, them, uh, most of my viewers are wondering where the hell a picture is. Firstly, They're banging the set, the strength, they're not getting anything. The national capital, in the strength and durability of the international connections of the bourgeoisie. What? Secondly, in the fact that for a long time after the revolution, the exploiters inevitably retain a number of the great practical advantages. They still have money, some movable property, often fairly considerable, they still have various connections, habits of organisation and management, knowledge of all the secrets, customs, methods, means and possibilities of management, superior education, close connections with the higher technical personnel who live and think like... The oh, no, we uh, seem to have run out of time on that call. Here is uh, Kentish Town, Obi. obi -Wan? Yes. Hello. Do you not find it funny the way in which um, everybody sort of goes on about the ice age and stuff? Um... Like global warming. Oh, no, he's cracking up. Oh, he had an excellent point as well. Yeah. Oh, does he? Really? Yes, I did. Try it again. Lean your head out the window, or... Yes? Row to a high... Row to higher ground. Yeah. R row upstream, mate. I'm red at the moment, so, yeah. Oh. I suppose, kind of. Anyway, back to you. Is any better? A little bit. Okay. But everybody bangs on about, um, you know, the ice age. Oh, he's gone again. So, what was his point? <laughs> I think he just said everyone should take swimming lessons. Really? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Everyone keeps banging on about the Ice Age. How did he get from the Ice Age to swimming lessons? Uh, I, d I don't know. I drifted out of it. Well, well I, I, lost consci I lost consciousness during the previous caller. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was he talking about? Whatever it was, he was reading it. Get a better yes. book, mate. You want to get yourself some Harry Potter? Have you got your copy yet? Have I got my copy yet? No. No. Oh. I've seen the movie, though. Have, really? Yeah. Hang on. Wh which movie has just come out, then? The one that's just come out. What, the same as the book? That'd be stupid. Why not? I think they're two books behind, I they? thought they were releasing one film that was actually ahead of the book. Was that... did that not happen? What? No. How, Ian? gets the energy and the strength, the patience to come in here day after day and take this kind of, well, it's mental abuse, really. Help, I'm being abused. I'm sure I read that they were going to release uh, one of the films before one of the books. Now, how would mm. they do that, then? What, they just guess what she might have written? Well, no, they'll have, like, uh, inside information. Oh, right, that's illegal. Oh. Insider trading. Yeah. They're trying to stamp that out. Well, they're not actually trying to stamp that out. They're pretending that they're going to stamp that out, but that's how the whole city runs, isn't it? Insider dealing. I mean, that's how those people make their hundreds of millions of pounds. Inside knowledge. That's yeah. what the, uh, the, that's what this country runs on. They just cover it up. Yeah, exactly. It's like a, it's, it's like a gentleman's club over there. They're all, uh, you know, in there making giant amounts of money, paying no tax at all, and screwing over the rest of us, us poor mugs. Oh, still, that's in Gramble. <laughs> well, this show's been, uh, Battle of Laughs tonight. Yeah, I've been amused. Oh. You're smiling? Yeah. What but are you complaining it, about? Well, it's because I can see the window behind you and it's just grey. Is it? Just, the whole world is just grey now. Oh, no. We had a nice day yesterday. I did a summer thing yesterday. Okay, here's a tip. If you learn nothing else from this show, mm -hmm. you'll learn nothing else from this show. Isn't that depressing? As soon as you see the sun, run, screaming out the door. I mean it. Just, uh, even if it's ju just for the slightest, teeniest amount, you've got to get out there and get some sun. I mean, look at you. You're very wan. You're pale. I know. Got to get some sun. Vitamin D. That's what it's all about. We haven't had any this year. The thing is, it's even actually too hot, though, to go abroad, because usually... Before you go abroad, you have this hot weather in this country to climatise yourself. Yeah. So How did Ian take it? Because it was 100 degrees where he was, or more, wasn't it? Well, he came back, so yeah. he obviously couldn't take the heat. Well, how did he take it? Did he talk about his jolly holidays? Yeah. And? He said it was too hot. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. <laughs> but, but usually, usually you I know. have no sympathy with that. You know, by the way, too hot, too sunny. Oh dear, poor baby. Well, stay in the shade and have a cocktail. Yeah, but even in the shade, just the, the humidity can dr just drain your energy, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. 
No, what drains your energy is you look out the window and it looks like autumn. It's looked like autumn all summer long. Yeah, do and they're predicting that, it's, that it's, this is it. This is going to continue to be like this. I mean, some experts waving his fingers in the air to denote um, e uh, inverted commas. Experts are saying that, um, or oh, come uh, the beginning of August, it's going to be super fantastic, and we will be out there roasting ourselves. We'll be, we'll we'll stop moaning about the rain. We'll start moaning about the heat. Oh, it's so hot like that. Uh, whereas other experts are saying, oh, no, it won't. It's, uh, we've had it. This is it. This is all summer long. Sorry about that, mate. Hmm. Huh. But even if it is true that we're going to get a, a nice little heat wave in beginning of August, that's only going to last for, like, 30 days, 31, and then, uh... Unfortunately, you're right. The amount of days that we, that it could be great are diminishing. Yeah. Daily. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> As each day goes by, there's another one that uh, is gone, that it could be great. Because you know that even if it starts being nice in September, even if it's 80 degrees during the day, in, uh, a day on a day in September, come five o'clock in the evening it's going to be cold. I mean, it, it just doesn't stay that hot uh, that late into the year, does it, in the evening? No. In the evening. But it's not necessarily, like, cold at the moment, though, is it? Yes. Is it? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, I've, I think it's chilly. I mean, I have to close the windows. Oh, it's too hot. It's still quite warm at night. Well, it depends what you mean by warm, as in not actually freezing over. Well, a bit uncomfortable to sleep. We're not at zero, no. Um, there is a, a scintilla of warmth in the air, yeah, but I would call it chilly. I, I've been wearing my, my furry slippers. Really? We've, yeah. we've changed our duvet to a, a sheet. Well, you've gone the other way. You're a refuse, Nick. I've, I've, I've got my winter fleece out and I've been wearing my l ludicrous furry slippers for the past few days, which look like little... I don't know why they did this, but you know, um, uh, sheepskin? Yeah. It's got a sort of, a, 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 like, suede on the outside and fluffiness on the inside. Sheepskin, right? Yeah. Well, um, I, I bought my slippers in a gentleman's shop and they turned the sheepskin out so that... I'd have to bring him in. You would laugh out loud. So that the sheepskin doesn't actually go up above your ankle. It turns out so that... So that it's, it's almost like it's been turned down, so that the sheepskin virtually touches the floor, but doesn't warm your ankle. It's like, um... They're like, um... So you've got this little fluffy bit around well, your looks, ankle yeah. that folds down? Yeah. It, they look like two two clouds on my feet as I shuffle about the house. Well, we've, we've seen enough of clouds. Yes, you're quite right. And, um... But yesterday, it was very nice. Went out, well, it seems very nice. It wasn't very nice, was it? It was all right. I went out, had a barbecue, and then scurried in when it got cold. Like... mice. <laughs> <laughs> it was pathetic. But it was briefly not raining, so you had to get out there and get something in. So that's uh, two barbecues and a picnic I've had so far this year. Well, well you've done more than me. Well, yeah. I mean, I pity the poor people who have to work five days a week and then can only look forward to the weekend. They're stuffed. When, historically, the weather is worse anyway. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, apparently the, the the industry during... The, I've, I'm past a break now, aren't I? Oh, yeah. I'll discuss this with you as we come back. Won't that be interesting? No! It's 7.46, here's Travel Now with Alan Joyce. Thanks, Nick. Um... London's LBC 97.3. Nick Abbott. Everything is going extremely well. Cratch End. Hello, Damien. Oh, Nick, maybe you can, maybe I can vent a bit of anger and get it out of my system. Go on, then. It, it, it comes across too often, th this subject, but parking wardens. Today, I had the most infuriating thing happen. Do, do you know, do you know Crouch End at all? No. Oh, I don't matter anyway. I was parked in a bus stop, which, fair enough. Guilty! Yes, 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 right, that, that's fair enough, yeah. I was parked half in, I was half in, half out. Right. But I accept that i got to pay it. But the little Hitlers were parked in one of those little, you know, those little annoying cars that only got two seats in the front. Yeah. They were parked directly by the actual bus stop in a car with a camera writing it down. Yeah, I've seen that a lot as well. People, no, people who are charged with prosecuting us to the full letter of the law are breaking it all the time themselves. I've got it on video. I've got it on my video camera. Oh, that won't do you any good. There were about three other people. No, no, I mean, it, but. It, it, the anger that it builds in, <laughs> builds up inside from the fact that I said to them, "How are you allowed to park right in front of the bus stop, properly, properly uh, stopping the bus and parking up?" And 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 
you can give me a ticket. Sorry, I'm getting all flustered here because it's just <laughs> burned me up all day. Calm down, calm down. Calm down, eh? And the, 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 the lovely lady, she yeah. said, we can park where we like. See? Uh, are, but can they? Are they allowed to park illegally? No. To, to sit there logging you, taking pictures of your car, to give you a ticket? No, they're not. But the only people who are going to prosecute them will be their mates at the, tr at the traffic warden institute or whatever it's called oh. and they're not going to do that are they because they all stick together as a team there were there were about three other people there as well that just came from the middle of nowhere they all got their cameras out they were all taking pictures the people at the bus stop i i, I was getting a bit annoyed but i didn't get violent or aggressive good for you I just i was just putting my point across well you'd left so, your gun at home had you yes i had it was actually in the car but i didn't want to leave yeah but, quite. um I just wanted to get my point across to them that how angry it makes a person <laughs> yeah. to be told you can't do this and here's here's another forty, fifty quid fine. Yeah. But And what did they say? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And then um after a while so many people were actually crowded around that they actually drove off and I'm sure that's what they're taught to do if you're gonna if you if you've annoyed that many people <laughs> time to gel on and, and find a new area to annoy Yeah, people. that's right. But yeah. I actually really do firmly believe in karma. It's only something that later on in life you realise if you go around creating a nuisance of yourself and just making people miserable, it will come back to get you. So I can't see how long those people how long their shelf life is in that job because I mean, how do they go home and the the, the husband or the wife goes, Had a nice day, darling. Oh yes managed to upset everybody I met today. Well, you know what, I was thinking about this the other day as I was, because there, there's a blizzard of them around where I live, and they're all, they're, every five minutes there's people going up and down the, uh, the road outside where I live, and I thought, people do dislike them, but you know what, they're doing that job, and they know that it's a job that, that is going to make them disliked by a large section of society, like policemen, for instance, mm -hmm. and they're not doing it because they hate people or they have some sort of uh, Taliban-esque um, uh, hatred of uh, people who drive cars. They're doing it because it's probably the only job they could get. You know, they went through um, uh, Britain's excellent educational system and they came out unable to read or write. <laughs> so they're... So that's uh, pretty much all that they've got, and it pays okay, and they're outside, it's not a desk-bound job, and, uh, and and they're not doing it because they hate people, they're doing it to to feed their children, who are, uh, you know, sitting open-mouthed like birds in the nest yeah. at home. No, you're, you're quite right, and, and when I do calm down, I probably won't hate them yeah. as much as I hate them now. And then I thought, no, screw them. <laughs> they are, <laughs> they are uh, a bunch of bleeps, oh. and uh, they, they deserve everything they get. But just for them to be so blatantly parked yeah. in the wrong place and telling me that they can do it because they're going to make me pay money, so therefore... And, and they then, are uh, representatives of the government. Have you not learned, Damien? It's don't do oh, as geez. they do. Do as they say. Oh, dear. And I actually did get it on a video camera where the bus came along and had to drive on the other side of the, round, uh, the road to get around them. And everybody was just sort of sitting there giving me a mild clap just for the fact that I'd managed to keep calm but get my point across to them and they, they, in the end they just drove off and, uh, you know, and I had to get on with my day. But every time, you know, something happened, my temper levels were that high anyway. You but... know what, Damien, uh, speaking as someone who spent his whole life winding himself up about <laughs> my new tie, it is not worth it. No, just no. think about all the pills you won't have to take for the rest of your life. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Do it right now. <sighs> and let it all out. There you go. Uh, and, and it'll be, I'll be okay tomorrow, but then I'm going to get the ticket, no doubt. Because they don't actually give you a ticket, the sneaky git, right? <laughs> they actually sit in the car, write the number down, take a picture, yeah. and then you get it about a week later. And I'm That's going on holiday in about ten days for seven months, believe it or not. Wow. And if it's not here by then, I'm going to come back to some massive fine. Well, know. you won't be uh, back in the country. Where are you going to go on holiday? I'm going to Northern Thailand, Chiang Mai. Oh, right. I go there every year, sort of work really hard for five or six months. And then you go there for seven months? Oh, normally six months, but because the summer's been that rubbish this year, I sell garden furniture and it's just been a really rubbish season. Right. Apart from April, so I just, I go there and do a bit of work, but mainly just playing tennis and football and having a really good time. All right, well, um, I, I started out feeling uh, sympathetic <laughs> with you, but now I think, <laughs> screw yeah, but you I've got too. I've with less to spend now. Oh, poor baby. I'll oh. just sit here in the gloom thinking about you having a nice time, shall I? Uh, well, you could do. All it's right. up to you. Thanks a lot, Damien. Cheers, Nick. Ta-ra. 528 LBC. <laughs> <laughs>
Wickham. Hi, Wickham. Hello, Edwina. Hello, Nick. Hi, Edwina. Has uh, Chris made you a lovely cup of tea yet? Yes. Super cuppa. Good. Good. I can't believe I heard you say that you wear slippers. Yeah. Have you not been listening to the boss man? That's Clive Bull. Slippers are dangerous. How's that? Well, you have accidents. That's why they're called slippers. You know, you slip <laughs> and <laughs> you have accidents in the home. Well, I'll take my health in my uh, in my own hands. And, uh, because I get cold. Unless it's at least 70 degrees, my fingers and my feet are like blocks of ice. Really? Yeah. Wow. But why do you... <laughs> I have Raynaud's disease or something like that, uh, or I'm just cold. Uh, y yeah. Well, I'll add it to the list of uh, my maladies. Oh, uh, well, I apologise then. Well, it's not your fault. Well, no, but I didn't know that. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I don't actually have Raynaud. Well, oh, well you, I might you mean do. you're just gaining my sympathy, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Perhaps just that not. my mental image of you, when you mentioned you were wearing slippers, yeah. I thought, oh, no, I can't believe this. Well, you know, when they're, they're so ludicrous. They do look like I've got my feet in, t in two white fluffy clouds, just <laughs> shuffling about. <laughs> oh, they're so silly, I have to take them off every time, uh, you know, if somebody comes in, I have to take them off, not just take them off, but also hide them. Because <laughs> they do, <laughs> they are greeted with uh, peals of laughter. I can just, I'm visualising this. Oh, please don't say any more. The image I have of you is just <laughs> dissipating. They've also got holes in, which I've <laughs> taped up with gaffer tape. I look so, I look like a fashion plate wandering about my place. <laughs> With your car and, and gaffer tape and everything else. Yeah, I my know. slippers and my car, both held together with the same tape. Yeah. And, and what's your head like? My head? Yes. <laughs> no tape on your head? Uh, um, <laughs> not so far, no. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, there I... used to be a DJ, uh, uh, he, he used to tape his head, he used to have his headphones up so loud that he used to tape his headphones to his head just to press them in more. <laughs> I think that was Roscoe. Hey, Roscoe! <laughs> Is he still going? I don't know. I, I don't listen to music stations. I, I dip into yours sometimes, Quite but right many too. talk radio. I listen to LBC's the best. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye because I'm going to start Edwina. hysterical. <laughs> okay. Bye. Ta ta, my dear. Bye bye. So Ian Lee is off doing uh, Big Brother. Doing what with Big Brother? I don't know. Just is Big Brother. Right. He's not taken over from, uh, um, uh, what's her name? Davina who jets in and out of the country from her bolt hole in the south of France. I saw Lovely that. for you, Edwina. Don't worry about us, we'll just sit here and suffer, shall we? Surely that uses up all her wages. Well, plus it puts tons of uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. That's not saving the planet. And I thought she was such a nice lady, too. London's LBC 97.3 0870 90 90 Nick Abbott. Hi, honey. How are you? So I was listening to our excellent news broadcast. Uh, I don't think they mentioned it in that one, but in the half past, when they told you what happens in The Simpsons movie, they told you what the story is. Well... Just the I hate that. basic outline of the story, I believe. I had to turn off the station that I work on. I had to put my fingers in my ears and hum loudly so I couldn't hear what they were saying. Stop you telling us what the story is. You always do that. Well, you know, I went to see the Harry Potter film and they, of course, uh, give you a half an hour of um, clips of films that are forthcoming attractions. Mm. You know, you've sat down there and you want to see the actual film, but what you've really paid for is, is adverts. <laughs> Yeah, but for something like Harry Potter, it's quite a complicated story anyway, so, you, you know, you kind of want a bit of help with the story, don't you? What? Because it's so complicated, I don't have a clue what it's about. Have you seen it yet? Uh, no. Nope. Well, there's the uh, reason why. How oh. <laughs> can you know what the story's about if you've neither read it nor seen the film? Yeah, but all that, like, wizardry and all that baloney. But no, they, uh, they they do adverts for forthcoming films, and so I always find myself, and I'm very embarrassed when I'm doing it, but I can't not do it. I put my fingers in my ears, mm -hmm. and I I make a, a noise in, in my head, which is usually humming, and look, look down at the ground. I must look like a complete idiot. But I don't want to see the, the trailers of the films I'm going to see before I see the actual films, and The Simpsons was among them. 
And then um, I come in here and I, I do a little show, and uh, suddenly I know what the thing is because they said it on the news. But it, it don't exactly give give away the actual ending of the film. In trailers, they do. The amount of times that I've seen the very final like stunt or explosion or death or whatever it might be in the trailer to a film, giving making the, uh, watching the whole film uh, pointless because you know what happens in the end. But the thing is, you don't know it's the end bit until you actually go and see the film. Yeah, and it's in your mind, and you th and you're thinking, well, I haven't seen seen that bit yet. I haven't seen that bit yet. I haven't seen that bit yet. And, uh, and further and further you go in, you think, oh, blimey, it is actually at the end. <laughs> Yeah, but by by that time you're already in the cinema and you've already paid your money. Yeah, I know. They've got you. <laughs> exactly. You, I find that very, very irritating. But the thing is, if they don't give anything away, then people won't know about it. Uh, yeah, they will, for, by word of mouth or by uh, a star system. If, if I read a review at all, it's just to see what the st how many stars they give it. Yeah. And then I, you know, you uh, mix and match. And if everybody says it's super fantastic, then you go and see it. Everybody, uh, everybody said that Children of Men was great, and that's on uh, TV on the f uh, film channel of the, of your satellite um, provider at the moment. That's a part of pile of old rubbish as I well. I was really disappointed. I that. lasted yeah. ten minutes. That was terrible. The thing is, uh, you can't rely on s a reviewer's, you know, opinion of it. Well, if if all reviewers say something is great, then you have to think, well, you know what, may maybe it is. Children of Men, that was unwatchable. But, you know, it's like, you know, listening to... Hey, by I the know. way, so was The Wire. The amount of people that said, oh, The Wire, oh, it's the most fantastic TV programme of all time. I heard that several times. They said, no TV programme in history has ever been as good as this. Oh, my thing's faded oh. down. Oh, oh, it would have been no. so great. It was all planned, yeah. everything. Absolutely. Mm. Not even The Sopranos, they said. And The Wire, oh, wow, great. Another hour-long American HBO drama to uh, to lose yourself in while you're waiting for 24 to come back. Yeah. And that was unwatchable as well. I, I can barely understand a word that they were saying. <laughs> it was all like that. Maybe that's when you needed a bit of plot line revealed so you knew what was going on. Right, well, maybe you have something there. Huh? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so I saw the, uh, the Harry Potter film, and my initial thought was, this isn't appropriate for children. What, the, the latest one? Yeah. The all one that's just them. come out. No, they, all of the previous ones are appropriate for children, but this one, I thought, this is not for children. It, it was no. sort of conflicted, because it obviously is for children, but I didn't think that it was actually appropriate for children. Yeah, but all the children it was targeted at, in the first place, have all grown up now. The cinema was full of children, by the way, and they, d for at least the first hour, none of them were remotely interested in the film. But it's a children's book, isn't it? Yeah. It's, isn't it very odd seeing, like, uh, blokes in, like, business suits, like, walk, you know, on the platform reading Harry Potter? Yes. That is odd. That is very strange. Yeah, stop reading it? Harry Potter. Yeah, you strange <laughs> men. <laughs> Read an economics manual. <laughs> yeah, or anything else. Elephant and Castle. Hello, Peter. Ro J.K. Rowling doesn't need any more money. Yes, Peter. Hi, hi there. Peter. Hi there. Listen, I've got a lovely little tale, um, which I hope will bring a smile to the viewers' faces about a parking attendant getting his comeuppance. Okay. Um, I used to work in the business. Um, don't ask me what I used to do. But what did um, you used to do? <laughs> Okay, well, I hope I won't be identified um, over the radio, but I used to train the parking attendants. Did you? Um, yeah, years and years ago. But, um, but anyway, this incident was about two years ago, and I'll never forget it. What has happened was that uh, I was out and about, and I got a call to attend uh, what was called a, a Code Red, which was, you know, a parking attendant in distress. A Code uh, Red? Warning! Warning! Yeah. Yeah, something like that, yeah. So uh, I got there about five minutes later um, after the call um, to discover that... Um, one of our, what we call a, a mobile parking attendant, one of the guys that rides around on the, uh, the moped, the really notorious one. Mm. Um, what this guy used to do... What do you mean, notorious? Notorious in that, they're, well, this particular person, his, his, his scruples were a bit lacking. Okay. But anyway, he used to, um, he used to, part, he used to deliberately go to places and, uh, and, and hide in sort of high offending areas to entrap people. You know, similar to the story that the gentleman a few minutes ago was, um, was talking about with the right. bus stop. Mm. Um, and what this guy did, um, w which he did sort of almost every day, was to hide in um, in a, an area which was private. So he used to park his motorcycle in the private property area, um, come out, and um, you know issue these tickets to people who park on the uh, on the yellow lines. 
Yeah. Right. Um, so, so far, so I, far, so legal. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, the shop owners, the residents, were used to this guy doing it because he turned up regular clock work at four p.m. You know, when the yellow line became active and and he just issued these tickets. Yeah. Anyway, um, little did he know that on this particular day, um, the um, there was a private enforcer uh, for the, the private area, a, a different enforcement company than that of the um, the highways, the streets. Um, so this private enforcement officer sort of waited there for him at like quarter four, knowing that he'd be there at four o'clock. As soon as he parked his bike in there, went out to zap somebody, the enforcement officer clamped his motorcycle. So, yeah. so when this guy came back and, um, you know, to, to, to jump on his bike and, uh, and make his escape, saw a clamp on his motorcycle. And um, it was really amusing because the shop owners came out, residents passing by, took pictures of this guy, you know, standing next to his bike with a, a clamp on his bike. And uh, I just thought that was poetic justice. Especially well, if you can afford that picture to me, I'll use it as a screensaver, all right. I, I, I don't have a picture, but uh, I'm sure that uh, if you contact some of the shop owners on Garrett Lane in Wandsworth, they'll have pictures to send to you. All right. Thanks for the good news, Peter. <laughs> all right. Cheers, cheers mate. Ta-da. Here is uh, Lorraine in Muswell Hill. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. Yeah. I've got those furry things on my feet as well. Oh, yeah? I'm absolutely freezing. Yeah, can't you, uh, I find it really depressing that I had to, like, I, tr I tried to, uh, to stave off the inevitable. I thought, well, I'll suffer a bit. It's July. You can't pull, pull your slippers <laughs> know, out of the cupboard exactly. now. <laughs> I know. But they're silly slippers, though, aren't they? Because they only heat the very bottom of your feet and the... And it, it, well, I it, get cold feet and cold hands. Yeah, me I, too, I, yeah. I can't, I can't stand it. Mm. Like you, I've got to remember that when I open the front door, I've got to remember, I'm like, oh, God. God, 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 to get those things off and hide them. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got some of the big holes in the front because I... Hey, you know what they make? What? Well... Let me just, I'll try uh, uh, again to describe these slippers. They're like, um, sheepskin booties that have been rolled down to below the ankle. So all the warmth is actually just, uh, is useless. Are they, are yours like that, Lorraine? No, mine, well, they're sort of stretched and they are starting to drop and I tend to slip on the wooden floor sometimes right. after it's been polished. But a candle exploded on me the other day. A candle? Yeah. A candle exploded? Well, you know, one of those things in those pots. Don't ask me why, I have no idea it did. How does a candle explode? I don't know, I guess it got too hot or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Candles are very dangerous when you apply heat to them. <laughs> I wasn't applying heat to it. Don't set a candle alight. I've got holes all over my, 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 my watsits and my toes all sticking out the end. Oh, you've got holes on your toeses, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I agree with you, it's Thing at the moment. I hate it. I hate, yeah. it. I hate it. Well, b b these these booties that would ordinarily come up to your ankles. Where do you get them from? Um, you know, uh, Savile Row. Mm. There's a, a gentleman's outfitters there that looks like it's uh, stuck in the 1940s. You go there's in there and it's all cloth there. and stuff, and and uh, the only things that they sell that are ready made are booties for slippers and uh, you know umbrellas and so on. I got them in there. I saw them in the window and I thought uh -huh. I must have them. Have a look one day. <laughs> Silliest slippers in the world. But anyway, all right. Thanks, Lorraine. All right, Cheers. Ta-da. They also do, and I and I've laughed out loud when I saw them, and I thought, who on earth would have that? But I'm thinking of having it. They do. Imagine um, a like a, a boot, like a Chelsea boot, sheepskin slipper. You got that in your mind? How high is the boot? Chelsea boot just comes over your ankles. Well, that's what mine are like, except that they've rolled it down so that. It, it makes the slipper wider and lower. It's like a low-slung slipper, which is silly because most of your foot is exposed to the cold. It just looks like it would be warm, but isn't actually. They're like sheepskin sandals. <laughs> They're silly, but um, but they do a thing that's uh, that's like a Chelsea boot, but twice as big, so mm -hmm. that you put both of your feet in one big boot. Wouldn't how, that be fantastic? How do you move around? You don't. Has it got tassels on it? Tassels? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a stripper's boot, it's slippers. Yeah, but, it, you know, the fact that it comes up to your, past your ankle, Yeah. It's, you know, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Well, no, because it keeps you warm. One giant booty to put, to slip both of your feet in, wouldn't that be great? What was ever wrong with socks? Socks, yeah, well I put socks on, but it's not warm enough. 
Stick another pair on the top. I'm going to buy um, another patio heater for inside. <laughs> and to hell with the environment. This is uh, Nikki Selman now with our travel news on LBC. Thank you very much. 90, 90, 973. Nick Abbott. Nick. It's a good idea to get someone else's opinion. There are some papers that aren't bothering with uh, Big Brother at all, and um, I think The Sun is sort of stuck in this rut where they've um, said at the very beginning of the programme that they were going to have a pull-out section every day. Mm. But you can tell that they're not remotely interested because no, no, no Big Brother story appears in any other part of the paper. They just sort of stuck it away and, oh, just forget about it, it's a disaster. But we, we said we were going to, so we'll have to keep doing it because it would be too much loss of face and they probably ordered all the extra paper and so it just keeps on doing it. But their heart's not in it. In no. it. No. Other papers seem to be all over it like a rash. Like the Star, for instance. They just can't get enough of it. They keep putting it on the front page. No one cares. Well, the thing is, usually at this time of year, there is no news yeah but because of all the floods right the big brother has to be pushed back quite a few pages no this happened before the floods it's got nothing to do with it and and the floods will interest you would interest the newspapers for a little while but then it's just it's like watching the 24-hour tv news it's just the same thing over and 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 i'm saying that over and over and over just to indicate how monotonously boring it is we to put a newsreader in wellingtons and stick them up to their uh, ankles in water but they always do it <laughs> you know there'll be a dry patch mm. and which will uh, go into where the water is and the newsreader could perfectly reasonably stand on the dry patch but no they've got to stand knee deep in water in their waders just to show us what water looks like we know what water looks like you don't have to stand in it it's not blue peter yeah, but it's not their fault. What? Well, it's their, it's like their directors and their producers yeah, going, exactly. you yeah. know, if, if they just stood right, like, right next to the water, mm. you can bet when they get back to, uh, base, the producers <laughs> gonna be like, why didn't you get in the water? Yeah, you know, you're not that would have been enough. a, that would have been a much better shot. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It would have been much less boring. Yeah. Maybe they're just hoping that they're gonna fall over and then they get the shots of the, the reporter in the water. They could stick it on YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. Fanstead, hello, Steve. Hello there. Steve. How you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Good, good, good. Um, I just want to bring up a point that one of your last callers said about the guy that was in a bus stop with the traffic wardens and stuff. Yeah. Um, one thing that sort of struck to me when he, had, when he was actually talking about it is the fact that they were parked up in a car illegally, giving somebody else a ticket while they were parked to leave. Yes. Um, with Ken Livingston and all the other sort of people that are all going on about climate change, environment, and all that sort of stuff, would it not be practical, as they started to give police officers and PCSOs push bikes, why don't they give traffic wardens push bikes? Because then they're easing congestion in London, therefore, they'd be able to enforce the tickets that way. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. What's a PCSO? Police Community Support Officer. Oh, right. The guys who look like policemen but aren't. Like those signs that say, polite notice? You have to yeah. look twice that it's not actually a police notice? Yeah. Ones that have no powers, as of yet. <laughs> right. What, um, uh, you sound like you're in the business. PCSO, you just rattle that one off like it's something that you say every day. What, um, what manners of, uh, are you? Oh, oh I'm ex-police, so... Ex-police, right. And how do the police view those PCSOs? To be honest, I don't know. I left just before they started. Oh. But my mate was a PCSO and he, he loved it. Yeah. Uh, he'd done it for about two and a half years. Yeah, he, he did love it, but it was just the fact that, like, the restrictedness on the job, isn't it, really? They're getting paid to do a job, and yet they can't do it to the fullest extent of the law, basically. Yeah, I don't understand that. Why, why, it's like putting a flag on yourself which says, stab me, isn't it? Because, because <laughs> as soon as you, um, are, look like you're representing the law, then half of the population are going to hate you, um, completely unreasonably. You haven't done anything to them, it's just that they represent, uh, something that they're, uh, you know, against. Yeah. Well, so to do that without having full recourse to the armoury that hangs off the belt of your average policeman, why would you do that? Well, what I think they should have done, and this is my personal opinion just prior to me leaving the job, is rather than bring in a whole new force of community support officers, which are no, no different from glorified security guards on the street, yeah. but they should have, all the special constables, which are like the voluntary police, they should have inquired to all them are they interested in joining the police? Because 95% of them probably want to use that as a stepping stone into the career. Well, you'd think. And all the people that say wanted to do a PCSO role, rather than having a community sport officer, they should have offered them, right, OK, if you do two years or three years as a special constable voluntary, 
you get to know whether you want to do the job initially because it's a very hands-on job. It's a very kind of involved job because basically you're doing exactly the same duties as a police officer, but you're just not getting paid for it. So there's three things. There's police and then there's PCSO and then what was that other thing you said? The special constabulary. And what's that? Um, that's basically a police officer, but they're voluntary. They, they do the same sort of training at Hendon. They do the same kind of everything, but they just don't get paid for it. It's a voluntary part of the police force. What? Didn't you know about that? Why would you do that? Well, I did it for eight years. I loved it. You you did it. You were a policeman f f for no for no money. Yep. Yeah, I loved it. I used it as a stepping stone into the police. But the trouble is, because they weren't recruiting, and also they're getting like police labour for free. But that's beside the point. I loved it because I wanted to do the job. But, um, I mean, there's a two-and-a-half, or uh, last time I noticed, there's a two-and-a-half-year waiting list for the Metropolitan Police. Good grief. So that's why they're sort of steering towards the PCSOs and special constables. Um, but with, um, with that, they should have, as I say, recruited from within the special constables to join the regular police force to increase... But not being funny, the PCSOs probably get about the same as a normal regular police officer. I think it's about two or two-and-a-half thousand pounds less per year. Um, I mean, their starting rate is about twenty-four and a half k. But do you um, get to carry around a taser? <laughs> no, no. They've only just started implementing, I think, handcuffs on the um, BTP, which is the British Transport Police Special Constables. I think they've just started to um, carry handcuffs. So their powers are slowly but surely increasing. Right. So do they... the British do the British Transport Police get to carry around a taser? Yeah. Well, I don't know actually. I, I, it's all changed since I left. I left about three years ago three and a half years ago, so it's all changed since then. Right. Okay, well, I'll investigate further. Thanks a lot, Steve. Okay, no problem. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Do I, do I get to get, carry around a taser? Because the things you see in the street when you've forgot your taser... Well, you'd be zapping away, wouldn't you? Oh. Left, right and centre. I know. I'd, I'd need to carry around my own battery just to keep her charging it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd deal out some justice straight away. Here's Burton on Trent. Hello, Aid. Hello, Aid. Aid. How are you doing? All right, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I get what a call about. Did you, um, did you ever see, uh, Carol on, the uh, Loose Doors? On what? Loose, what's it? Loose women. Um, <laughs> I was just like a bit of a joke, but it's Right, like yeah, very small bit, yeah. No, uh, every now and again it's on at the gym when I'm there, but I, she's, uh, uh it's, uh, uh, so if it's at the gym, unless you've got your headphones on, you can't hear the sound. It's Carol with the sound turned off. I love yeah. She, I love she's really, she really comes out with some classic, um, things. This is a program, it's something like the O.D. Alan Sugar Your Fired thing going, it's not him, it's a copy on ITV, there's something similar. On yeah, platform. which is incredibly unpopular. It's about time that copies of other TV programmes became incredibly unpopular and then people would have to actually come up with an idea. Well, the worm well, has turned. Whoever the host was, there was, uh, there was on there with Carol, and um, Carol says, I've got an invention. Uh, she says, um, an hat with an even camera in it, so when you go out... A what? A hat. With a an hat? With camera in it. Yeah. So when you go out on the booze, the next day people ask you questions, you can watch it back and, uh, you'll know what's, what you've been doing. Well, they, they actually have that. They so have, that um, like a tie on. pin that records everything that you do. In fact, this is the future. Everything that you do will get, uh, w recorded, and so you have, um, a recording of your entire life. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Oh, that was a bit boring. <laughs> well, it depends on what your life's like, Aid. So you say that is actually reality now? Yes, or... apparently they have that, yeah. Well, so Carol's uh, a bit behind there. I know, yeah, you've got to catch up, dear. Yeah. <laughs> you ever caught that, um, James May programme on, uh, BBC Two? Um, I re there was two on last night, weren't there? I recorded them both, I haven't watched them yet. Oh, so I can't talk about that, then. The, uh, the least interesting uh, member of that triumvirate. It's also at least paid, isn't he? I wouldn't be surprised, yeah, because the, the, the blonde, bland one, he's probably getting paid tons of money because he is so very bland. And he's a DJ, hey! Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the other one gets paid a ton of money because he's an, an amusing writer. You know, that's the reality show I'm, uh, I'm expecting doesn't talk, uh, come along. The, um, one big DJ or something stupid. No, DJ, <laughs> people who work in radio are so boring, and not even a TV company would, uh, wouldn't want to stick a camera in our face. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, Plus, we're weird. Aren't we weird? People who work in radio, there's just something wrong with them. Isn't that right, Chris? What? <laughs> you must be the exception to the, to the 
at all, then. Yeah, believe me, I'm not. <laughs> well, yes, you are. <laughs> well, you make a good point. On the other hand... Um, so, I'll have to leave the actual details, because I don't really want to tell you what it's about if you haven't seen it. That's, uh, seen what? The programme. Oh, the James May thing? Yeah. No, I haven't. No, I'll, uh, yeah, call me, uh, next week and I'll have watched it by then, all right. <laughs> you, what's it? You're really be, you're like me, you're behind on everything that you watch. Uh, I have about a hundred hours on my, um, personal video recorder of stuff to get through. They are absolutely great, though, aren't they? I mean, what size is your hard drive? Excuse me? <laughs> On my hard drive? We're looking at ten inches. If I only. I would have got a small one. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. I've got to go, Aid. Yeah, OK. Cheers, mate. ta, -ta. Right. Yeah, the, uh, the Sun led with a story the other day that um, Richard Hammond was caught up in the flood. <laughs> a, a celebrity got wet. 50 thousand. London's LBC 97.3. 0870-90-90-973. Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we doing? I'm glad you asked, Carol. We are doing a How Low auction, which is uh, closing at 11.30 this evening. And the lot on offer, a 42-inch Samsung Plasma TV, which is not helping the planet. But regardless of that, everybody wants one, right? I've got one, you should have one too. Uh, it's the person with the lowest unique bid which wins the game. That is the lowest bid in pence that nobody else makes before the end of the auction at 11.30 tonight. Uh, this has fast motion enhancing technologies that will provide a top-notch visual experience. Images are clearer, sharper and more vibrant on the screen. Groovy. It's HD ready with built-in free view. It has a minimalist look with, um, uh, style. <laughs> I should get into adverts. I am so persuasive. It actually looks, uh, fantastic. Even when it's switched off. To bid, text LBC plus your bid in pence to 88821. For example, if your bid was 50p, it would be LBC50 to 88821. Lines close at 11.30 this evening. Bidders must be over 16. Bids cost £1.50 plus your standard network rate. See lbc.co.uk for terms and conditions. Did I say it right? Yeah. Here is, um, no one. Where did he go? He disappeared. Oh, well, what a pity, never mind. Um, I was talking about Big Brother uh, just one moment ago, and it's something that I've completely avoided all summer long, and I'm quite pleased, actually, that I'm not uh, in, in any of that mess. Have you seen any of it? Nope. No. Neither I saw, like, the opening night yeah, me on too. silent, mm -hmm. and then... Eh. I made my decision right there that I wasn't interested in any of those people. And I'm quite glad about it, too. I mean, imagine how much of your life you would have wasted watching that rubbish. The standard of, uh, of the the quality of the people that are in there is actually quite staggering. Sometimes you'll, you'll see something and you think, how is it that these people are walking around able to, let's not mince words, procreate, and they are having this uh, level of um, intelligence? It's really... Um, it's actually beyond belief. I'll wait till uh, Chum Lee comes back, and then I'll quiz you both on the questions that these people were uh, oh, asked. Great. Um, I'll try. <laughs> if I don't manage to get them right, though. Well, they're very difficult. I bet. They're called... Ch she's called Chanel. <laughs> she's the... I've no See, idea. I, I've not watched it at all, but I know she's the posh spike look-alike, isn't she? Is she? Is that what she's going for? I think that's the one. Chanel. Chanel. Yeah, that's two L's pronounced with a W. Chanel. Chanel. Here he is. I have a quiz for you. Are you ready? Oh, go on then. Get back in there. <laughs> Chanel and the twins, whoever they are, showed their no brain boxes. This is in the Daily Mirror, which um, is still going with this story, putting it on page, oh, all the way back at page 34. Uh, uh, so there are no brain boxes by failing to correctly identify types of dogs and trees. Tree surge? Have they got a tree surgeon in there? Yeah. Okay. Tree surgeon Liam. That's not a, an ordinary surgeon. He no, just... I think it's Liam. Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? Uh, you said Liam. 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 Yeah. Liam. Huh? Tree surgeon Liam. 
started the encounter when Amanda said, ask some questions, say if I'm clever. I've got no idea if that's how she speaks, that's my guess. It's probably Spot quite on. accurate, yeah. When he asked, uh, he asked her to name four presidents. Name four presidents. Um, um, of America. Presidents. John F. Kennedy. Yes. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. You yep. can have two Bushes. So Bush Senior, Bush Junior. Bush Senior. Yeah. There you go. She said Tony Blair, Gordon Brown. They'd like to be. Then he tried again. And she said, uh, she said, no, no, no. He, he pointed out that they were not US leaders. And he said, try again. And she said, Margaret Thacker. Not even Thatcher, Thacker. <laughs> yeah, but in her defence... Oh, maybe Lord. that's how you go. say it. In Voice her of accent. reason. In her defence, you know, Margaret Thatcher was quite a while before her time. Was quite she? A while, well, so was Mozart. She's supposed <laughs> never to have heard of him either. Thacker. He wasn't president. Well, how old is she? Margaret Thacker. I mean, good grief. <laughs> well, you know, some things do just pass you by, don't they? <laughs> Life being <laughs> one of them, yeah. There's going to be people who are 17 years old... I don't care. ...that weren't alive when Margaret Thatcher was That's Prime irrelevant. Minister. That's weird. I mean, to not know... Mm. Uh, you know, oh, it's, where do you even start? Liam, 22, decided to give up on the subject when M Amanda asked, How would I know America? Good point. These people have gone through the British education system. Education, education, education. But we don't study America in great detail. I didn't when I was yeah. at school. You don't need to study America in we great have a look detail at some to, to a while. come up with four US presidents. Yeah, well. I mean, not even one. She, not even one she could name. Not even the present one. I think I, I learnt most of my uh, America, m my American knowledge through film. Mm. Yeah, through television, more likely. Yeah, television is the great educator. It sits in the corner of the room and is the uh, recipient of much bile. But you know what? We get ninety percent of our entertainment from it. I love television. Wow. I really do. I, I think I would miss it more than anything else, apart from perhaps the sofa. Your brain must be bursting with knowledge, cos... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, he moved on to ask her and the other girls, uh, another question. See if you can get this one right. Oh, no. Please name four types of... tree. Uh, fern. Yeah. Um, apple. Mm -hmm. Um, pear. <laughs> Orange. Yes. Just go for all the fruits. Mm -hmm. Strawberry. Strawberry. Yeah. 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 Um, y you see where I'm going? Banana. Yeah. How many have I said? I think we've Two. got four there. No, no you got... haven't. Lettuce. That was rubbish. Name four trees that don't Oak. that don't produce fruits that you, you would find in a fruit bowl. Birch. You get see, there you are, birch. No, come on. You be quiet. Uh, I want I want him to uh, do it. Come on, Chris. Four uh, trees that haven't been already mentioned. Fern, which I said. Yes. Uh, apple. No, no, no fruit. No. Oh, okay, but, uh, yeah, fern. Yes. In fact, fern is out. Why? Fern tree. Yeah. Come Heck. on. What do you mean fur? Fern. Maple? <laughs> <laughs> now we're on to syrups. Can you can you tell us some trees that don't provide pudding? Well I don't <laughs> I don't live ones. near trees. <laughs> trees are all around. See, like I say, this now I'm gonna break into wet wet wet. The trees are rolling around in This proves my point. <laughs> it's quite accurate, actually. Yeah. Did him on Perfect. In the some things just pass you by. It doesn't make you stupid. Name four trees or I will th leap through three I'm panes of glass and kill you. I've named as many as I can. And I'm not uh, being metaphorical when I say that either. I mean, I'll actually kill you. Acorn? Is that... <laughs> 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 no, acorn is not a tree. Why, why would I have encountered types of trees, though, in my in lifetime? Name four trees. Yeah, I've done Don't, don't I, make me come in there. You can... Uh, you this programme will now. not continue until you name four trees. I mean it. Can I have some help from some no. callers? 
Can the callers help me? There are trees with three letter words. They're very easy. What? The traditional English begins with an O. O olive? <laughs> pine, <laughs> pine. Pine tree. Pine beginning yeah. with an O. Yeah, a pine. Right. It's a silent O. Oh, isn't yeah, it? No, pi isn't pine. Pine, okay. Okay, can I have pine? Pine tree. <laughs> yes. Uh, Christmas. <laughs> Completely mirroring the answer that one of these dopes in Big Brother gave. Christmas, he said. That's not a type of a tree. Pine. I'll give you pine. Give me pine. Yes. So I said pine and I mm -hmm. said... Begins with an O. 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 Three-letter word beginning with O. O. Y you just repeating O doesn't help me at all. O. Oh. oh. Ooh. Does it actually make that sound though when you Yeah, oh, oh, oh. That's the beginning of the word. Oh, three letters beginning with an O, oh, tree. Oh. Oak. Yay! Ooh. Right, hmm. we'll go for another one. Three letter word beginning with an E. Air. Uh, e. Air. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, is that. Give me. Second letter. What's. L. Elm. Elm. <laughs> One more to go. No, I said four. You've said three. This feels like I've said a million types of tree. <laughs> right, one more to go. Let's uh, make it an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his head in his hands. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> and my palms are sweating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why, do you, why are you putting me through this? Yeah, you see, now, next time you won't let Ian take a break, will you? No. Begins with a W. Oh, God. Yeah. Something to do with cricket. It's a word. It's a word. It's a, it's a weeping word. A word. It's a word. <laughs> Two syllables. Six letters. Something to do with cricket. <laughs> you find it by the riverbank, dangling its fronds into the water. Lovely they are. My favourite tree. Eighties fantasy film. Willow. Insane, Willow. <laughs> now we can press on. Oh, <laughs> what a relief! I'll ask you another question in a minute. <laughs> um, no, it's not my turn anymore. Liam, twenty-two, decided to give up on the subject uh, when Amanda asked, "Why would I know America?" and moved on to asking her and the other girls four types of tree. Christmas, said Chanel. Yeah, well, shoe. Christmas, repeated Amanda. Got, like, oh. As though they were going, oh yeah, I know one. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, uh, seals. Tree bark, she said. <laughs> as though that were a type of tree. And then she got really excited and said, uh, uh, uh trees with pink leaves. <laughs> That's a nice one. Trees with red leaves. Oh, wow, she was on a mm. roll. Hmm. So things pass you by, though. Elf. Tree, Sam said. Oh, elf. <laughs> no, only one letter out, I guess. Mm. Closer than me. Shocked Liam could only say apple. Well, you got that right, because somebody said apple, which is what you said. Yeah, but why, yeah. Could, why couldn't I have fruit trees? Because it was... D you didn't read the small print. What was the small print No saying? pudding. Oh. Shocked Liam could only say, yeah, he said uh, the girls showed a bit more promise when he quizzed them on different dogs. Uh oh. Uh, Gary, it's your turn. <laughs> Chris, four different dogs. <laughs> In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a moment to collect your thoughts. Yeah. To Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't Google it. I won't. And, uh, and we'll have to come back. Who's doing the, uh, who's doing it? It's Nikki Salmon. Are we going to the ads first? No, apparently not. Nikki Selman has the travel news. I do indeed. Starting out on the North Sea. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? This is all about torturing Chris. Thanks. Now, do you promise that you did not Google the answer during the course of that break? No, I promise. Are you wiping tears from your eyes? <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> How's your heart rate? Fast. You're looking upset. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like being asked questions, but... Right, question number three. Oh. Yep. The girls showed a bit more promise when he quit. This is about Big Brother, right? The people in Big Brother. 
Uh, he asked uh, the girls, who had asked him to question them to see how bright they were. They they challenged him to uh, a quiz. You ask us and we'll t see how bright we are. Like, <laughs> like that. Mm. <laughs> so now you're doing the same to me? Yes. And the reason that I'm doing it is for the audience's amusement. Sp specifically mine. Right. Not is it not to prove some sort of point? No, just ah. just to be just for a bit of bit of a laugh. Well, you got to have a laugh, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Name four dogs. Poodle. Poodle. Yeah. Poodle. Uh, You're doing very well. Saint Bernard. Saint Bernard. Yes. Jack Russell. Correct. I knew you were going to say Jack Russell. It's, uh, spooky. It's almost like we're doing a show on Friday night. And... Labrador. It's the right answer! Here you go. You can relax. Phew. The answer's given in the Big Brother house. Chanel said, toilet paper dog. <laughs> Referring to the Andrex puppy. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Type of dog, toilet paper dog. Yes. I mean, even the toilet paper dog would have given a better answer than that. Molly said, Lassie. I mean, that just staggers the imagination, doesn't it? But people can just picture those dogs in their mind then, can't they? Despite their lack of general knowledge, the 19-year-old twins <laughs> grip onto something firm, this is a shocker, have been studying social work. Huh? Good grief! Does that require knowledge of dogs uh, and trees? Well, apparently it requires no knowledge of any kind whatsoever. Yeah, if 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 you're uh, a member of society who is having trouble, then turn to these girls. They know nothing. Meanwhile, program bosses have brought forward the latest twists with six new housemates entering uh, on uh, Friday night. And Morning. who cares? The people that are in the house? Oh, yeah. That's that, about it. They're going to be very upset when they come out and find that no one's been watching. How do you get back to you, your normal life, though, after that? For quite, are you, are quite you, quickly, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, but are you, supposed, are you supposed to, though? You know, it, well, they're really... expecting to come out and be uh, bazillionaires, like um, that gobby dope who has made all the money. You know, wh one woman went in there and made all the money. What's her name? Jade Goody. Jade Goody, yeah. She barely, even win. Barely functions as a human being. She's a millionaire many times over. And this is in the minds of the people who are going... In fact, it's in the minds of all teenagers. They see Jade Goody, they see how unremittingly stupid she is and how rich she is, and they think it's a career choice. <laughs> they, think <laughs> <laughs> they think that if they just aspire to it, then they can be millionaires with uh, a gated uh, mansion in Essex as well. As though that's actually a possibility. It's, it's as likely as winning the lottery. You might as well uh, buy a scratch card as a career move. See, what they don't realise is it's been done, though. It's, it's done. Yes. She's the only one... You Correct. Know, to do it, and yes. that, that's, that's where right. it ends. Yeah. And the reason that she's so successful is that she, p uh, on the stupidity scale, she puts these girls to shame. I mean, she's she's so stupid that uh, you'd think that you'd keep her as a pet. <laughs> I mean, but that's, is, is, be honest, that's, that's why she is so successful, because she thought that, um, I can't remember any of her, uh, any of her wor wise words of wisdom now? She thought that's uh, about East Anglian. East Angula, yeah. <laughs> 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 but is she, was she doing a double bluff? No, she really wasn't. Oh, she really right, is okay. that stupid. Oh, right. But in this country now, we celebrate the terminally stupid, the totally stoned, and the drunk, and the uh, the people who have indiscriminate sex with each other. That's the only things that are celebrated now. People who actually achieve anything. Uh, the the press aren't remotely interested in. Yeah, if you haven't been to rehab, we don't like you. Yes, exactly. We will celebrate you if you uh, go in and out of rehab like it's got a revolving door on it. <laughs> yeah. Like the Sun have their Caners League. And, you, you know, and and then on the very next page they say how dreadful it is that everyone's uh, getting drunk and uh, having uh, and fighting each other and the Sun disapproves. No, they don't. They're revelling in it. They're only interested in people who get drunk. I mean, this the pictures of Harry Potter. Uh, having the, uh, going on his 18th birthday, being uh, helped out of a club by 
with a, an elderly gentleman of Middle Eastern appearance with his arm around his shoulder. I don't fancy his much. <laughs> 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 but he doesn't look drunk in that photo, does well, he? Well, he's just looking down. But, uh, but but the story is, of course, it was his 18th birthday. There was alcohol present. Therefore, he's drunk off his arse. But, they're, they're, but, but those pictures don't tell that story. But then they are only still pictures. Yeah, but... but that's the celebration, you see. Oh, he went out and he was on the lash and isn't it... Uh, they're not actually saying, isn't it great, but they are saying, isn't it great? Because these are the only people that we... that they cover. The Caners League and the Shaggers League and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> And the government says, oh, you know, we're uh, concerned about the message that we're sending out. So we're going to look at 24-hour drinking and we're going to upgrade, uh, uh, re-upgrade cannabis because it was such a giant success the last time it was uh, uh, more proscribed. Mm. Of course it wasn't. Ridiculous. <laughs> What's the point? No one's listening to any message that they, that they give out. The message that people are listening to are the ones that they read every day. The people that they aspire, uh, whose lifestyles they aspire to. The people on the, uh, the, the celebrity uh, pages of The Sun, who yeah. are all stoned, smashed, and shagging each other. And that's the, uh, that seems to be the lifestyle. All those people are rich and fabulous, and they're all stoned and pissed and, smagging e and uh, shagging each other. So therefore, I must get stoned and drunk and, and shag indiscriminately. Therefore, I, then, uh, by that method, I will be a millionaire and celebrated. I yeah. will get into parties for free. But the thing is that you know the all all the photographers uh, they were all following um, uh, Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe, that's it. Uh, yeah. Because here's a boy who's just you know got his hands on his what eighteen million Something whatever, like that, yeah. and he's about and he's just turned eighteen. It's his birthday, and they were all really disappointed that he just went to the cricket. Yes. Weren't they? Mm. They were expect they were expecting him to be totally off his face, you know. To be underneath a giant pile of hookers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How disappointed were they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, precisely. He's a sensible boy. Good for you. This is LBC. London's LBC 97.3. Nick Abbott. I enjoy working with people. That's what Chris was saying to me just earlier on. He enjoys working with people, but specifically not me, right? Correct. Caterham. Hello, Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Oh, There's Kate Bush again. Wimbledon. Hello, Owen. Hi. Hi, Nick. Owen. What a marvellous quiz that was. I got the dog thing wrong. I got Rover the Alsatian, Spot the Jack Russell, Sultan the Saluki, Jimmy the Bulldog, and Malcolm the Beagle. Five out of and four isn't bad. <laughs> oh, and Amos the Bitzer. Right. That's the bits of this and bits of that. I thought they were dogs I had to know. Ha! These people that can't do these quizzes, this means genuinely that they must believe in the the Tooth Fairy, Father Christmas, and aliens. Um, well, uh, yes. I mean, aliens, of course, exist. They are among us. In fact, oh. one's leading the country right now. Oh. Yeah, no, but aliens are a bit, um... I think that's a bit far-fetched. Yeah. Now I've gone far too away. far, yeah. Oh, by the way, there's a, there's a, you know, um, uh, Chantelwa, with the W at the end? Yes. There's a, the consonants are much better dismissed with the name Michelle, which is known as Shell. And that's both at the beginning and at the end has completely disappeared. So unless you know who you're referring to, you just wouldn't know at all. Shell. Shell. <laughs> Well, sure. may maybe in uh, downtown Wimbledon, that's how they speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Down in the Wimbledon, with the Wimbledon Massive. What about, what about the trees? I mean, those are, hmm, very good. You could try nut tree. Nut you tree, yeah. Nut. You missed that one, nut tree, yeah. You could try all the nuts. Shoe you tree, you missed that one. Yes, well, you do all the green ones, then you do all the edible nut ones, like the hazel and the beech and, and all those. There's loads of different... I mean, not knowing your trees... Beach is, nut. It's fundamental. Yeah. For an education. Emphasis on the last two syllables, yeah. Are there any other quizzes? I do like... I love <laughs> them. They are superb. I'll I mean. bring in a quiz book tomorrow and I'll turn the spotlight on Chris. <laughs> for your edification and amusement. Thanks a lot, Owen. 
Yeah, Cheers, great. Mate. I'll be listening to the rest of the show with great amusement. Yeah, OK, thanks a lot. Ta-da. Bye for now. Uh, yes, you're going to look forward to that, aren't you? In fact, that's what we're going to do tomorrow. I'm going to sit you in the uh, mastermind chair. Mm. What's going to be your chosen subject? Um... I don't know, but my stomach's feeling a bit wheezy. Uh, I oh. don't think I'm going to be well enough to come in tomorrow. Oh, baby. Yeah. I promise I won't do that. I'm sorry. I'm feeling a bit better now. You did actually get, a, like, a bit of a glint of a... glint of menace in your eye. <laughs> I was glad that there's two doors between us and three panes of glass. Yeah, me too. If you had the strength to open those two doors, then I thought I'd really be in trouble. Yes. <laughs> Let's have, um, oh, very briefly, hi, Louise. Hi, Nick. Got 40 seconds. Make oh, it count. great. Um... Celebrities that are sort of like look, looked at to that fall Speak out faster. Junk. Speak faster. <laughs> right. I think the reason why people like Quicker. them so much is because um, we're constantly told not to Fifteen jump seconds. take jugs or anything like that. Quicker. So because of that, people think it's cool and they see celebrities junk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a point made in the time provided. Well done, Louise. <laughs> you are a professional. London's LBC 97.3 Nick Abbott I really like you. Do you like me? So another cyclist has been found uh, he got new blood or something, didn't he? He had all of his blood taken out and replaced by somebody else's blood. Not all of it. Isn't that what it was? He had a blood transfusion in order to make him cycle better. But they, do, they don't take out all of your blood, do they? Yeah. They, first they take out all of your blood, and then while you lie there, they nip out and get some more. <laughs> you, just, you just collapse, And then you? stick it in what you. What if they took all the blood out, but they'd forgotten to get any, and yeah. so you're just left? Mm. Well, you'd just have to wait, wouldn't you? And get your old blood back, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. But you'd look white as a sheet, wouldn't you? That is a bit extreme, isn't it? Just to win a cycle race. I guess it's not just to win a cycle race, it's to acquire the millions that go with it. Are, are people interested in, in cycling? I just can't imagine anybody being remotely interested in cycling. I mean, what is that? It's not... It's uh, just so dull. It's not really a sport that we follow in this country, or... Well, France well, do, I can't, don't imagine, they? I can't imagine even the people in France are remotely interested. I mean, well, guys get on a bike and then they ride along. And, and is that is? Hmm. Hey! Yeah. I mean, I if guess... I want to see people on a bike riding along, I'll get in my car and have a little drive. Yeah, if you want to see, yeah, see a, a cycle challenge, you know, see, see if you can get home on your bike, you know, through the streets of London. Yeah, if I want to see a lot of people on drugs, I'll go to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, oh, hey! Hey! <laughs> I keep forgetting it's got such a sudden end. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on like about three cycle rides a day now, man. Here's uh, Catford. Hello, Trixie. Hello! Trixie. Oh, hi. Hello. Um, I, I wanted to make a comment about, um, quizzes, if that's right. Quizzes? Quizzes, yes. I mean, obviously, the, the girls on, on that programme are absolutely idiotic. Oh, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. But I, I do find the, 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 the process of when you're being tested in front of an audience is actually really nerve-wracking. Yeah. It makes me freeze up. Mm, definitely. I've, I've tried doing um, the, not big, the big quiz, but the big ask. I've done it a couple of times. And I've, I've had the most incredibly low scores, like four and five. Not because I'm stupid, but because I just panic. Yeah. And, um, I wondered if you had any tips about how, how to get over that. I mean, I actually managed to, to I, I, the second time I did it, I said to Gary, I said, look, I said, please, I just panic, I'm not a stupid person. Because <laughs> I, I, I do quizzes, I've joined a little quiz thing on the internet. You know? Oh. You know, I, I find it quite fascinating, it uses my brain. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean, you need beta blockers. I need beta blockers. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I've tried those. Or a stuff. stiff drink, Trixie. A no, I don't drink. No, right. no, no, 
the drinks do not do not uh, agree with me sadly um but um i and i've tried beta blockers but i mean i need so have many you? my my heart would just stop have you tried beta blockers i have tried beta blockers oh. but quite quite honestly i i just have to keep taking them and 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 my my i remember months once my heart rate was so slow <laughs> I, I was is it barely I, uh, barely alive yeah well my hands got cold barely registered as a human being yeah. well i mean i i have very similar problems to yours including by the way i think mild Raynard. so i do sympathize with you yeah i'm cold now i mean this studio is heated to 70 degrees yeah. and i'm actually cold yeah i, I it, it can be the middle of summer and um somebody said to me oh yeah well it's summertime now and i touched uh i touched their arm with my the, just the tips of my fingers and they were icy. They couldn't believe it. The yeah. rest of me was quite hot. People recoil from my touch, too, but yeah. uh, it's less to do with the, uh, my temperature. But you see, you see, you know, you might be a vampire. Yeah, quite possibly, yeah. Deep down, you might be a vampire. And I think you might have to consider that. You know, you may have to, to give in to those tendencies. Well, I've started eating meat again now. I had some, I was uh, just about to mention yeah. that. I had now. some, um, uh, bloody beef yesterday, Ooh. all red and juicy beef. it was. <laughs> and I, uh, I whizzed it up to make burger and stuck it on the, burger. um... Burger, lovely. Ooh. Stuck it on the barbie. Oh, did you, did you make your own relish to go with it? No, I had, um, mayonnaise, mm. onion marmalade, oh. tomato ketchup... And, um, what was the other thing? Like, yeah, if you, you couldn't possibly taste anything that was in there because I'd smothered it with so many different condiments. Oh, and this is on your, your, your lovely, um, balcony, was it? And yeah. Oh, you lucky... Person. I had it in a, in a nice flowery bap, Trixie. Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. Baps. You know, yeah. you really have Calm to have down. a competition <laughs> where, whereby you... Give away some baps. Three? Baps as prizes. No, 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 no. You, 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 what do points make? make? Okay, you Baps. could make. You could actually <laughs> make a burger. I'm not saying in this you invite anybody round to your place or anything. Yeah, I'm not going to invite anybody round no, to my absolutely. place. No one gets to come no, in. No, 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 no. Your life is sacrosanct, and I understand that. Don't worry. Uh, but I mean, you, there must, you know, you, one day you really must sort of make something. You know, you know, in premises that are nothing to do. When, you know, nobody's home, not yours, but just so somebody can at least taste this amazing food. Oh, 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 yeah, the, I hate you for that now. Oh, oh, that, that's awful. <laughs> Rixie, I think you need to take some beta blockers or, you I, know, well, no, no, whatever no, other I, pills I, you can I find den, around the house. I don't, because I, seriously, if I, 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 they re I really did get a scare from taking too, too many beta blockers. But I know, I know exactly what you mean. When we're w watching quizzes on TV, where we feel so very smart because we can answer all of the questions, but yeah. we're not, uh, we don't have the spotlight on us, like yeah. uh, Paul or Chris had uh, earlier on. His mind went totally a blank. Yeah, He's not really that stupid. He's yeah, I mean, it was just my, that he was confused. Yeah, me and my third husband, uh, when when it, we we used to watch a Millionaire, and we used to we, it was, we used to love doing that. And, yeah. uh, mind you, him being a lot older than myself, you know, he knew most of the answers anyway, so he would be my my first. Oh, because friend. with age brings wisdom. Well, precisely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. How would you be as a phone friend? Well, it very much depends on what the question is. Ah, oh, yeah. Exactly. Why all the friends aren't on Google, just ready, ready to, you know, because you could, you could uh, bring something up in uh, 15 seconds, couldn't you? Oh, uh, mm. well, Google up a friend. Yes, Trixie, that's, that's what I meant. Google, Google up, up a friend. A I'll, uh, I'll draw you a diagram and I'll send it in the post. Well, okay. How, seriously, how do you Google? I know how to use Google. On my face space. Oh, dot com. God, no way. Yeah, oh, do it. No, 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 I'm making the sign of a cross. No, 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 I, I would not, I would not use those, not if you, not if you paid me. Not I'll pay you a hundred million pounds. Mm, oh, I'll well, pay you a I, billion pounds. I'll tell you what I might do. I might just possibly put my name, um, or an alias up there. No information about myself whatsoever. How about that? I bet that people have, uh, have made s sites in your name. People you know, have made I sites in my I name. I tell you what I did do. I did, you know, I, I, I did actually, and, and I make a sort of a MySpace thing, and I put a name. And do you know, I actually had two people asking me if they could be my friend, and I had no information about myself at all. Yeah. <laughs> now, 
How stupid can this be? Well, it's, it's, it, um, it indicates a certain desperation on their part. Precisely. Will you be my friend, Trixie? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, was, no, I was not down as Trixie. I was down as something totally <laughs> Well, that could I have mean, been the oh thing. Oh, my gosh, you know, the people are still asking if they can be my friend. This is so, so sad. Yeah, it's not friends. It's got nothing to do with, uh, no. with communication or, um, or, or like, um, interpersonal relationships at all. It's typing. Stop typing, people. Yeah. Yes. Hey, listen, Trixie, I've got to go. Okay. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Bye. The founder of the internet site Facebook, my face space, uh, will be in court this week defending an allegation that he stole the idea from three former fellow Harvard students. Did you see this? Nope. Mark Zuckerberg, crazy name, boring guy, 23, <laughs> has been hailed as the next Steve Jobs, uh, the uh, innovative creator of Apple and his social networking site as the next Google. But according to his three accusers, who went on to launch a similar but significantly less successful site, Mr. Zuckerberg allegedly cut them out of their own idea after they recruited him to work on it, in it. So if you ever get a good idea, mm. don't recruit anybody to work on it. Work on, work on it yourself. Don't tell your friends. And don't even tell your MySpace friends, either. Yeah, definitely not, then. They're not your friends. Uh, in a lawsuit originally filed three years ago, the trio claimed that Mr. Zuckerberg stole the idea, source code, and business plan for Facebook in 2003 while working as a programmer for them. See, in 2003, it wasn't such a big deal, was it? Now, taking over the world. Uh, the trio were developing their own social network site, which is called Connect You. You ever heard about that? Nope. No. You heard about Facebook? Yep. Of course. Um, they now allege that he deliberately stalled its progress because they brought this guy in, they say, to work on it because he was a computer whiz. And they say that he deliberately stalled its progress so that he could set up Facebook six months ahead, a crucial time advantage, they say, in the breakneck speed of the internet revolution. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg denies any wrongdoing. What's the case dismissed? Do you know how much money is at stake here? Um, you know how much money he's turned down? This is Steve. He's 23 years old. Yeah. How depressing is that? He's turned down a billion dollars for, for his business. One, really? not million, billion dollars. Not enough. What, what, is he holding out for more? Or does he just want to keep his hand in the business? Mr. Zuckerberg has already turned down a billion dollar offer for the site and says he wants his operation to remain private, but some claim he is simply holding out for two billion dollars. Oh. What the yeah. hell are you going to do with the extra billion? Yeah, but knowing his luck now, he probably won't get that two billion. Oh, no one will want it. Yeah, he'll only get the 500 million if they have to split it in half. Aww. Its millions of British users include David Miliband, the uh, foreign secretary, who it's difficult to take seriously because he looks like a top modu. He looks like Harry Potter without the glasses. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he does like Harry Potter's dad, yeah. Uh, Jonathan Dimbleby, the television presenter, and Orlando Bloom, the actor. Facebook allows members to post pictures and information about themselves as well as exchange gossip with friends. Or type, in other words. This is LBC, his travel with Nikki Selman. Thank you very much, and looking at... You're wondering what it's all about, and I can't tell you because I don't know myself. Do you fancy seeing the best films first and for free? Affirmative. Uh, well, you can with LBC 97.3 Film Club in association with Cineworld Cinemas. I went to one yesterday. It was a delight. I saw Har Harry Potter there. Really? Yeah, the, uh, the the children's film that's inappropriate for children. Yeah. It was a little scary. It was very. It was very. It wasn't fun like all the others are fun. You've seen them all, right? No. No. <laughs> was it packed out in there? No, not really. They were they were children. They weren't really taking their seat. They were just like wandering around as though they were at play school. It's just, How <laughs> annoying! Why, why go to a cinema and pay money and then just not what, do anything but watch what was on the screen? I find that mystifying. I really do. It's like very confusing to me. Because they're I don't children. Get it. Yeah, but if you if if you're so, if if you're a child, if you're a parent of a child, and you know that they have some sort of mental problem such that they can't sit still for five minutes. I mean, I've been at. Uh, at the at theatres or the ballet. Oh, I went, yeah, well, I went once to the ballet. Right. Oh, the ballet. That is. Uh, oh, talk about interesting. Boring. But anyway, children were sitting there, wrapped with attention, utterly silent for hour upon endless hour. I was fidgeting and uh, you know eating sweets and <laughs> wanting to get up and go to the loo, but they just sat there, glued to it, not moving. So children are able to uh, you know take things in without uh, being bombarded with entertainment uh, and uh, and attended to every ten mm. seconds. It's just that these children weren't. It's oh. Could it be because they were ballet 
children. You know, they're kind of quite a lot well brought up. Yeah, exactly. B well brought up by parents mm. who know the word no. Yes. Is it because the film is like four hours long? It's a very long film, yeah. Th interestingly, they, they wandered about at the beginning, and then about an hour in, you hardly heard a peep out of them. So they got interested in it. In it! But um, yeah. I think so it what took them a while. Made them interest? Or did they actually I just think it just got loud. Uh, mm. Do you remember when films just used to be an hour and a half? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. I hope The Simpsons is about an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, uh, that's like three episodes, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. I mean, you could sit through three episodes of The Simpsons, couldn't you? Oh, mm -hmm. definitely. But if it's two hours. Mm, it's a lot. Well, I'll see it on Friday and I'll, uh, I'll have a report for you on your desk by uh, Saturday night. I Thanks, like that. When I come in and do my normal super show. Good. Uh, which, by the way, is on Saturday night, ten till one. Might as well say it now. And if you caught, if you didn't uh, catch any of the last week's excitement, then you can catch it on our excellent podcast service, which you will find under the uh, LBC Plus button on our website, lbc.co.uk. Isn't that right, Joan? Yes, it is, Nick. Thank of you. course, it's right. Oh, by the way, I'm yes. sorry, Joan. I didn't do my bit. I sort of got halfway through it and then got dis distracted. Which bit? This bit. Um, the LBC Film Club, which is also on our website, and uh, this month's movie is Knocked Up from the makers of 40-Year-Old Virgin. You saw that, right? No. It's a hilarious new comedy about something which I'm not going to tell you, because if I tell you, then you'll know what it's about. But oh. It doesn't cost a penny to join the LBC Film Club, Joan. Oh, oh, you, really? You could be going every month to see the best new movies in town before anybody else gets to see them and spores it for you by telling you what happened in the end. <gasps> Well, if you could guarantee they were the best. I guarantee it. Well, Log that's on a to good idea then, isn't it? LBC.co.uk, the LBC Listener Club. That's all there is to it. Once you remember, you can click to request your tickets. Oh, where do you go? LBC.co.uk. What's oh, that I website mean, where again? Where do you go to see the film? <laughs> Cineworld Cinemas. I'm glad you asked me that, because that's, that's what it is in association with. And where are they? Um, in your neighbourhood. Oh, really? Yes. They're, uh, up your area, Joan. I like the sound of that. Cool. Why don't I join? Um, I would do so today, without further ado do. I will, I will certainly see to that. Through my son. You have to do it for me. Yeah. But uh, that really does sound quite interesting. It does. It sounds... Yeah, it's all you said it, you see. Yeah. I've, I've let that pass me by for days and days, and now you said it that way. The word, when you said it's free to join. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the free part that really uh, no, pricks your ears. Correct. And it is cinemas around the place. It, you don't have to go into the centre of London, right? I believe they're at uh, Cine World Cinemas, which are uh, almost certainly in your locale. Well, I'll have to say about that. Yeah. Anyway, I phoned up because I'm a bit interested in this cyclist who got this blood transfusion. Right. Did you say he got all his blood transfused? I only Please. half I only half saw the story because uh, I wasn't really paying attention because I find cycling so very interesting. Boring. <laughs> I know me too. But why I was I was thinking, well, was he able to choose whose blood he got, and why exactly did he have a transfusion? Is it that um? Do you know I'm already on shaky ground? I don't really know. But isn't it something like that? if you exert yourself so very much, then there is uh, your blood produces something that makes you tired, and so if you get fresh blood, then uh, you will be reinvigorated. Oh, but because you know, I was thinking, wouldn't it be good if sportsmen then, you know, if they wanted to go into this in a big way, they would choose uh, the blood of somebody who was well known. To be a great athlete or a great cyclist or a great whatever. Yeah, top quality blood. Yeah, because uh, it does affect the person after it goes into the new person. I could do with a couple of pints of that myself. Yeah, you'd be like a new person for a while, but only if it last a few months and then you go back to being yourself again. Uh, well, I don't mind if I'm a new person, just a different person. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Just anybody else, Joan. No, but I, I, it really does. I, uh, my sister, who had, oh, one kind of personality, and she had to have a massive blood transfusion years and years ago, and she did become this different person for, I would say, six months. Rubbish. No, really. It not, not in, uh, you know, she started looking different or eating different food or anything, but she was 
really different. Now, is is that the, she went through a traumatic experience and came out uh, with a new interest in life? No, not no. She just she. Or she started she speaking a, with a Jamaican accent. She had a different kind of energy and um, and a different kind of way of 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 being. And I've heard of other people. I really have who who started actually enjoying different food and um, and remembering different things in their lives that had no bearing on themselves. Have you not heard about that? Well, they have they have m memories of experiences that happened to someone else. Yes. Just because they got their yes. blood. And they started really liking different food and and really liking different habits and so on because did, of all this new blood. Did they see dead people? No, <laughs> but dead people. Oh, you know, you're just saying that. But haven't you? I have definitely heard this, and nobody's mentioned it for a few years. But it certainly came up in my mind. You know, if you're going to start blood transfusions, maybe you know people could say, "Oh, I'll, I'll have a dose of that," and but I want it, want it to be this kind of person or that kind of person who had it before. Not when it's an emergency, you know, and you've had a traffic yeah, accident. Yeah, then you just get any old, uh, any old blood. Well, yeah. yeah, aren't they? Yes, but, um, you know, you can just see it turning into a big business, can't you? Well, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it does sound ridiculous, but, uh, yeah, I can in absolutely imagine uh, rich people um, stocking up on uh, athletes' blood just to, uh, you know, give them a little pep in the morning. Yes. But a cup of coffee, a fag, and a blood transfusion. <laughs> it's a great way to start the day. <laughs> it's like porridge. Oh. <laughs> you do have porridge? Every day, yeah. Oh. Yes, I keep thinking I might. Do it, Joan, and then you'll never look back. Mm. Well, I like the toast, though. Well, you can have toast as a second breakfast, but have porridge first. Yeah, yeah, a bit later on. What, coffee time? Yeah, second breakfast, Joan. Coffee time? Yeah, second breakfast when you have, um, you know... But a fruit cake. A fruit cake? Yeah, no fruit cake, huh? Yeah, I'm working with uh, a couple of fruit cakes right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I know who they think the fruit cake is. <laughs> oh, I know. Yes. Mm, they haven't said so. Though. Oh, oh no, they haven't said so. They're being very polite. Oh. Be no. polite. <laughs> Thanks, Joan. Bye, bye, now. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Yeah, guess guess what other uh, sport has been um, accused of uh, 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 giving in to the drugs menace. We've had cycling. Well, I mean, it's obvious, you know, they're yomping around, up and down and up and down and up and down and back and forth, to and fro and round and round, and, uh, yeah, of course they're going to be on uh, something or other. Does anybody believe that cycling is free of drugs? No! Any more than anybody believes that worldwide wrestling is free of steroids? Oh, come <laughs> off it. Look at those blokes. They look like they're ready to explode. Oh, is that the other sport, then? No, it isn't. Well, no, that's darts. obvious. Darts. <laughs> Scrabble. Well, you're on the right lines, weirdly enough. I mean, I do actually know the answer. I so. would be surprised if darts was actually. Uh, well, you could have uh, beta blockers as darts, uh, you know, for darts, because it would steady your hand, Pat. But then, That's you know, true. so does five pints of lager. <laughs> so it's on the right line of darts. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like. It's, they say it's a sport, but it's not. Because archery? You can, you can play it at the highest level while being fat. <laughs> it's not archery, then. Golf. What? Golf. What? Golfers do drugs. Performance-enhancing drugs. Gary Player shocked golf by ins uh, insisting that ten players on the tour are using drugs. They sneak them in in the balls. woo London's LBC 97.3. 0870-9090-973. Nick Abbott. Do you mind if I say a few words? Thank you. Richmond. Hello, Alan. Hello. How are you, Nick? All right, thanks. You do realise this phone call's lasted longer than half my relationships, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> 23 minutes. Moan, moan, moan. Mmm, spidey pig. Anyway, um... Never having watched more than about three seconds of Big Brother, the first I knew about it was um, when you mentioned it. And I find it hard to believe that you can actually get beyond about the age of ten being surrounded by things like trees, fish, animals, birds, and not know four of them. It's actually staggering, isn't it? It's, well, it, what's actually really scary is not that there are people out there that are that thick, because law of averages says there has to be but when you look at how many thousand people must have gone in for the big brother auditions 
the odds of getting that many sick people out of a quantity, a, a number of people that went into the auditions in the house at one time, that is scary. Well, that's two points in one. First of all, th it's, uh, what's, it's not surprising that there are people that are that thick. I find it surprising that there are so many of them. But the, uh, that they're in the house is just a reflection of Channel 4 wanting a house full of incredibly stupid people in the hope that they'll all um, tear each other's hair out. I mean, you, if you ask those same girls something like, I don't know, four footballers' wives, I bet they'd know them. Or if you asked any of the kids... I'm not sure about footballers' wives. Well, anything they aspire to, or any of the kids these days. You ask them those same questions, you'll probably get the same... Oh, no, you'll probably get, if you ask them dogs, you'll probably get like Doberman and Pitbull or something like that. Yes. Um, but you ask them, I don't know, video games or something, or, you know, PS2 games, boom, you get the answers. Yeah. But it's, it's just... It, it is actually scary. Well, b particularly after ten years of a government who insisted that their number one priority was not education, it was education, education, education. And this, okay, is, well, uh, this is the result, ten years that's later. Education, yeah, that's educating us to believe all their lies and just to put up with the crap. That maybe that's what he basis. meant. Yeah, maybe that's what he meant. That's yeah. the education they've been giving us. Good point, Alan. All right. I mean, the, the, yeah, go, go on. on. No, I, I, I thought that was it, but go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I mean, getting getting on that side of it, I didn't, didn't, um, Monsieur Brown say something about doing something about pensions the other week? What, he, he, he not being responsible for the mess that yeah. it's all in, yeah. hello, that's what I'm thinking <laughs> of. He's going on about, we've got to get the pension sorted out. I'm like, hang on a minute, yes. weren't you the one that was, like, holding the reins of that horse when it ran away and, like, killed itself? I think his position is that he was, uh, busy, um, doing nothing, nothing the whole day long, uh, for the last ten years, and now he's come blinking into the light and it's like, good grief, what a mess this is. This had nothing to do with me. It's the Bart Simpson defence. It was yeah, like this when I got here. That, that's what I'm talking about, their idea of education. They actually expect, after all that, for us to just believe what they say. Yeah. OK, well, listen, thanks yeah. a lot, Alan. Better luck with your next relationship, all right? <laughs> no worries. Cheers, ta -da. Here's the West End. Hello, Simon. Hi, Nick. Good evening. Good evening. Can I just clarify ab about this dope, the blood doping, how it actually works, if you're interested? Go on, then. This is how I understand uh, that, that it's, it works in sport. A few weeks before a sporting event, they will take a pint or two pints, perhaps, of blood out of an athlete's body. What they will then do is, prior the, the night before a big sporting day or whatever, they will ins insert a large amount of oxygen into that blood and reinsert it back into the athlete really? so that his blood is carrying an enormous amount of oxygen thereby giving him much more um, sporting uh, power or energy or whatever you want to call it. Is that what it is? I think that I believe that's how it works. That's in, in basic terms. How on earth did sport c come to this? Well, I, Money, I suppose, is the I answer in one word. I don't know. And I, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, people will go to any length, as has been proven, to, to, to beat the system. Um, and I, be also, I believe that it, it's also uh, more difficult to detect someone who, who, who cheats in this way than someone who's taking drugs. Well, you know what, it's, it, it's going to continually, continue to be virtually impossible to detect anyone who's taking drugs because, in, in much the same way that it's impossible to stop the narcotics trade, sure. it's because the amount of money that's in the, uh, the trade for giving and supplying drugs com completely overwhelms the amount of money that um, any regulatory authority has got at its disposal to prevent people from doing that. Uh, absolutely. It, it's so sad that, that sport lovers... Uh, you know, see this thing kind of going on because, you know, people like myself, armchair sport lovers who sit there and enjoy sport for the glory of it, who would, who would uh, do anything to play football for their country or cricket or run yeah. in the Olympic Games or whatever. We would do that for the love of it. Well, we get These our guys, kicks vicariously through, th through seeing the uh, achievements of others. Sure, absolutely. These guys who have been given that gift but abuse it, 
uh, and, and as you say, while there is the huge amounts of money going on being thrown at sport, people, it's like a game, isn't it? People will try it and find a different way of cheating, and then it's up to the authorities to try and detect what they've done. And the cheaters uh, will always be one step ahead of the authorities. Well, always. I guess so, I guess so. I don't know about uh, you, but every time I see somebody win something, um, I always just assume that they're the ones that have got the best drugs. Well... So there are certain, I mean, there are certain sports that I believe are clean, but there well, are... Sports, like what? Well, I, I believe football is clean. No, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that football is clean. It depends what you mean by clean. Okay. I, 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 I mean, I, I'm talking about in this particular country. I, I believe that the, the, the system for detecting drugs in this country is so stringent that, 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 it, that, it's, that it's pretty... I mean, yes, OK, you, you'll have the odd footballer who takes a bit of coke or cannabis or whatever it might be. Yeah, but those really aren't performance-enhancing drugs, though, yeah, are they? Yeah, they're off sports. <laughs> in particular, cycling and athletics. Those are only yeah. performance-enhancing drugs if you're dogging. Yeah, not footballing. <laughs> well, that's a different matter. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, there are certain sports that, that are so tainted that, that you know, uh, I don't know... Uh, like running you know, in a straight line, for instance. Anybody who runs in a straight line faster than anybody else, I just assume that they're all hopped up on, uh, on, on well, baller serum. Uh, unfortunately, listen, I, I, I'm sure there are plenty of athletes out there who win medals and win competitions and whatever and break world records who are perfectly clean. But, you know, it only takes one Ben Johnson or whoever, you know, that taints everybody with the same brush. Yeah, I believe uh, that they're all tainted by the same brush. I just assume that they're all on, that they're all on something well, or other. Uh, you know, who knows? Uh, it, it's, it's just, yeah, and, and, and I feel sorry for those people that are clean. Yeah, absolutely. Say, yeah. Everybody, you know, some, once somebody breaks the world record and they may do that 100% legitimately, like you say, everyone will raise an eyebrow and, and ask the question. Mm. I think, Simon, it comes down to if they look like they're on steroids and they run like they're on steroids, they're on yeah. steroids. Well, it may well be. Right. You know, when, 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 women, when women athletes start looking more like men mm. than the actual men... That's a sign. Uh, ..then, you know, I think uh, where they smoke, there's fire. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but don't say the word smoke, though. <laughs> Want to score okay. some pot? OK. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. OK, bye. Cheers, ta-da. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm not interested in, in the Olympics, because it's all like, you know, it's got precious little to do with actual sport anymore. It's just science, isn't it? All these athletes are just scientific experiments. Raging. A lot of people oh. like science. <laughs> <laughs> does wonders. It does. It's very good, yeah. Oh, yeah, talking about footballers, by the way, Frank Lampard was in the papers today. Um, he was carrying a baby his own. Ah, I know. And uh, a pushchair in one hand and his bye-bye in the other. And the newspapers had two pictures of him, but they didn't mention the thing that, that actually struck me more than anything else. I wonder if you can see that through there. I know you're about 15 foot away and it's not a giant picture. Could, but can you see what he's wearing? Is that not... Don't what? say it. Can you see what's on that T-shirt? No. No, it just... I can just see, like, an orange T-shirt. Okay, I'll describe it to you. It says here, Frank Lampard is out of the doghouse, leaving his home to take, uh, year-old daughter Luna. 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 Luna Lampard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Luna Lampard? Yeah, but... Well, this is not Tiara or whatever, um, Jordan's called their baby. Bongella, I think. <laughs> but you don't call, go around calling her by her first name and her surname, or... Just Luna's fine on its own, isn't it? Luna Lampard. Yeah, but that's he, the silliest name I've ever heard. Luna Lampard. Yeah, you know, these kids have got to go to school. What is it with with uh, rich people in the media? They they must insist on calling their children the stupidest names. Luna, I mean, Bob Geldof is absolute. Bob Geldof and Frank Zappa the worst in this respect. Frank Zappa, uh, Dweezil, and Moon Unit. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> call them Moon Unit. Short. Maybe oh. people are bored of just names like Dave and Steve. And, and there's nothing wrong with Dave and Laura Steve. Laura and just don't call your child Nicholas Abbott. Okay, I'll cross that one off the list then. But Luna, I mean Luna, 
That's all right. Yeah, I'm... Luna is all right, but not Luna Lampard. Yeah, but you don't. I mean, that's silly. Yeah, but you don't go around calling your friends by their first name and their surname at once, do you? It's written down on her passport, Luna Lampard. People are going to be collapsing in hysterics <laughs> every time she goes into a country. I think it's got a nice ring to it, Luna Lampard. It kind of flows, doesn't it? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, anyway, he's been accused of cheating on blah, 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 who cares, uh, but he's got a child in one hand, a one-year-old daughter in one hand, he's got a push chair in the other, and he's wearing a T-shirt, and I googled, it's, uh, the, the letters A-M-K appear on this T-shirt, I googled it and I couldn't find anything, um, that, uh, corresponded with A-M-K. Maybe it's a, the, the name of the manufacturer mm. of the T-shirt, hmm. but above it is a silhouette of a woman whose legs are spread so far apart that if she uh, did it any further, she'd snap in two like a Christmas wishbone. Are you sure it's not like the Renaissance Man figure, you know, the Da Vinci thing? It's like a take-off of that or something? It's a woman who's sitting down with her legs spread oh, so <laughs> far <laughs> apart not, that uh, her feet are in two different postcodes. <laughs> her hands are down in an intimate area. It looks like the logo of a strip club. And he's carrying his... L carrying his little baby close to the logo of what looks like the Bada Bing from the, uh, from the Sopranos. Absolutely. How old's his baby, though? One. She's not gonna re know what it is. Of course she does. It's a, it's the silhouette of a human being. She knows what that is. I mean, is the, it's, talk about... I mean, he calls her, calls her Luna and then carries her around in a t-shirt from what looks like a strip club. Yep. Nice parenting, Frank. Yep. This is LBC. Let's have travel now with Nikki Selman. Well, looky. London's LBC 97.3. Nick Abbott. Here we go. Hey. You know what? Um, as soon as Luna Lampard reaches her 16th birthday, I'm going to buy her a present. There's going to be a stripper's pole. It'd fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> that is shocking, isn't it? Well, you know, she's not going to realise what it is at once. Of course she is. No, it's she's a, not. It's a human silhouette. Yeah, but... We're it... primed to recognise human silhouettes. Not in that position. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've got anyway, a good when, point. When she's yeah, it'll, older. Be, it'll be the f hopefully the first time she's ever seen a human in that position. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless their dad uh, stretches before a game like that, but I very much doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what kind of. Can you imagine your dad walking around in something that looks like an advert, a t shirt that's an advert for a strippers club? Uh, no. No. Not, not really, no. But m most of. You know. Our uh, dads aren't as cool as Frank Lampard, are they? Well, that's true <laughs> enough as well, yeah. But I don't think it's cool to wander to carry a baby <laughs> in a t-shirt that, that that's pornographic. That's just I don't get that. So that one I've got for you, I've got to take back, have I? I'm afraid so. Yeah. But the, the, say it's not the, right the thing is, when you when you get up in the morning, you dress yourself. You don't necessarily think. You don't consider the logo to to be appropriate for all the thing activities that you're going to do that day. <laughs> what going out the house? You mean that that t-shirt isn't appropriate for anything outside the house? Oh, it's only a bit of a laugh, and it's it? not. It's pornography. In silhouette form. Yes. Okay. Well, she's obviously in, enjoying herself. Yeah, but maybe she's just stretching. <laughs> <laughs> Yoga. It doesn't, necess it doesn't necessarily have to be linked to porn. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, either that or it's just the letter M. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, hmm. I also was watching the news earlier on, this is talking about bad parenting. You know, the news is, uh, there's nothing in the news other than, um... Flirt. Yeah, that's all that's on the news. Simpsons. Damp houses. And, oh, and the Simpsons, yeah. Uh, and the, the pictures on, uh, Sky News earlier on were of, uh, you know, here, here I am a reporter and, you know, same old thing you've been watching day after day, more houses, more floods and so on. And they pointed a picture at a woman and she had her two, uh, little children in a canoe. And right. she was mm. pushing them along, wee, they're going, and the children were, you know, dragging their hands in the water and like, wee, they're going, and then she'd push them along the other way and wee, and the camera was just like, just following her doing this. Flood water is diluted human sewage. Yes. She's playing with her children in sewage. What a nice. great idea. Yeah, but they're in the canoe. They're all right. 
trailing their hands in a canoe. What, so you don't have any contact with water when you're in a in a small boat. <laughs> but maybe it's good for their immune system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you're supposed to come into Cholera. contact with some yeah. with some germs mm. so that it, it boosts your immune system and you don't get ill. Yeah, you know, it's uh, what doesn't it kill you might makes... make you stronger. Yeah, yeah. As, lo as long as it doesn't kill you. No, right. So exactly. we'll, we'll gamble with the first part <laughs> in hope of the second. Yeah, for a bit I, of fun. I couldn't believe it. And they kept playing it over and over again, and, th and then they said, "Oh, you know what? Some people have been emailing us that maybe that woman shouldn't actually be playing in sewage <laughs> with the children." <laughs> so don't come into contact with any flood water. No, don't. What? It's backed up sewage pipes. That's what that is. Well, it's a bit difficult to avoid, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, but don't play in it with your children. <laughs> Just wade through it if necessary. Yeah, but if you're wading through it, you might as well have a little play. You know, you, you'd be covered, wouldn't you? Uh, a cavort. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Wash your hands afterwards. Yes. Please wash your hands after playing with your mummy. Someone someone said earlier that uh, the reason that there there is all this water is because we import, like, 20, uh, oh, like, I don't know, someone said that they, we actually drink about 20 million bot uh, bottles of water a day, right? Do we? Apparently so. Okay. This is, what, this is just something I've heard. And that this is all imported water. And so we're bringing all this water into the country and, you know, flushing it away. And so it's just kind of staying here. All this extra water. Sea levels rising, that's so why. So it's, it's the bottled water that's seeping into people. So maybe that woman was right. It's actually drinkable. Possibly. Yeah, in, in would you like still or sparkling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think you, I don't think you have the option to choose. Oh, right, OK. Um, well, I bet there are some bubbles in it, because, you know, after a while it starts to ferment, doesn't it? Do they? Yeah, all sorts of things in there. Yeah. Alligators, snakes, all sorts. Here, do you want a bad snake story? Do you Ooh. like snakes? Yeah. It's not a very nice story. Is it bad for the snake or for the, for a person? Person. Oh, yeah. Well, and the, and, and the snake. Oh. oh. Yeah, go on. What? So, if it was bad for the snake, <laughs> that's worse than if it was bad for the person. <laughs> yeah. What type of snake? What kind of a sick country are we living in when we, um, when we value reptiles above people? You can't be cruel to animals. I'm rooting for the snake. It's a snake in a shower story. They're the best kind. Not in this country. Don't say it's in... No, it's not in this country. That's right. <laughs> yeah, go <laughs> on then. But it could be. No. No, it couldn't. Well, it could, because of the way that the snake got there. Oh. See, a lot of people keep pets. Yeah. Mm. How I am? Well, maybe I'll come back with that. You can steal yourself. Ooh. Okay. All right, ready? Take a deep breath. <gasps> Are you... Nick Abbott. You shouldn't do this, because it's crazy <laughs> and dangerous. Going to the shower is crazy and dangerous. Why? Billy was halfway through her shower at about 5 p.m. when the serpent crawled from a ceiling tile above her. Mm. Ceiling tile? Yeah. It got through a tile? Yes. What? It doesn't make sense. It sounds like well, you're like one of those t sort of tiles. Exactly like the tile that's directly above your head. It sounds like. Can you hear that? Is that it's someone's phone on vibrate? It sounds like someone's printing. It does. Doesn't it? That's uh. Is there a printer in this it's, studio? It's like someone's doing a load of photocopying. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> it's the excellent soundproofing in the building. It's yeah. probably coming from from over the road. Oh, well. Anyway, back to this. Mm. Do, 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 do. Billy was halfway through a shower when a, th when a serpent crawled from the ceiling tile above her. For a moment, snake and woman regarded each other in the steam and spray. It was just hanging there right in front of my face, Billy said. I was shocked, and then I ran out of the bathroom and toward the door. I was naked, but I didn't know what to do. When she recovered... I can't concentrate. What's that? It's probably not coming out on the air, but it's very loud in here. <laughs> yeah, isn't no, it? My phone just went mental for some reason. It was your phone. Yeah, it was that's just what I thought. Absolutely. It sounded like the vibration uh, of a phone. Yeah. Every time my phone goes off and vibrate, I think I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> Switch to the other pocket then. 
It was just hanging there right in front of my face. So she's running out in the nude. Ooh. When she recovered her senses, Billy put on some clothes and called for help. The snake, perhaps as startled as anyone else by the encounter, retreated back above the ceiling tiles. Oh, how long was it? Uh, three, well, she thought it was three feet long. So it's long enough. Well, that's bound to be an exaggeration, then. People are always exaggerate in their stories, well, don't they? We're talking about snakes, not <laughs> you know what. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, people always fish. Mm. They took one look and she said... We're looking at ten inches. Um, enter, uh, Police Captain Kevin. <laughs> what? As a is, small... that, is that his title? Yeah. As a small, timid crowd gathered outside Billy's apartment, the policeman began poking at the ceiling in the bathroom. There was nothing above the first panel. There was nothing above the second. And then he felt resistance <laughs> under one tile directly over the shower head. I'd say it's right up there, he said. The officer was right. After lifting a tile, uh, the tile with a broom handle and shining a flashlight, he could see a python <gasps> retreating up a pipe. The snake settled in one spot and remained there. That's a big snake, he said. The police academy offers no training in the handling and removal of, exo of exotic snakes, so he called in an animal control expert. Well done, Kevin. It's <laughs> a good choice, <laughs> considering he had no training. When he arrived, he was not intimidated by a measly bathroom snake, the animal control expert. He spent ten seconds removing the tile and five seconds to reach up and rip the snake out of the pipe. Uh, rip it? Well, you know, give, it a, give it a quick yank. Yeah. The snake coiled around his wrist but did not attempt to strike. Pythons, they're the ones that squeeze to death, right? They don't mm. bite you to death, do they? No. Th or is that cobra? Cobras bite. Name yeah. three snakes. <laughs> cobra, <laughs> python and grass. Is the correct answer. Uh, half the people cowered in the kitchen, screamed. Everybody screamed. Ah. Ah. Is it big they squeaked? God, no, he said. Some pythons get up to 12 feet long. He held the snake so Billy and her friends could see it. More squealing and backing away. Uh. Billy, Billy was relieved to have the snake under control, but she was not entirely free of stress. I'm still scared, she said. There could be another one. What if there's another one? I don't know why she mm. spoke in that accent, but she did. She's got a good Where point, she though. From? Yeah. The pest controller said that since, and this is the point of concern, Mm -hmm. Since most exotic snakes he captures are escaped or released pets, there could be another one hiding somewhere. He lifted more ceiling tiles, aimed a torch, and found nothing. Snakes don't limit themselves to the warmth of a shower spray. They're also likely to travel inside pipes. Before climbing into his truck, he said one final word of caution for Billy and her neighbours. If they're really concerned about snakes running, running amok in their apartment building, he said they should check their toilet bowls before sitting down on them. I'll leave you with that thought. Happy dreams. <laughs>